Fifty Shades Freed. Uh, it's Cherry Doom. It's Charles. It's Chad. We're here for the final book. The well, entire book. We have done it, finally. And I, it's funny because I noticed as the, um, as Holy Cat So Freaking Pot has gone on, we've gotten, like, smaller and smaller amounts wow. of episodes because we're so fucking fed up with these books. We went from, like, 25 to 3. To 1. To 1. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. We're back. We actually started, um... The book before we did a chunk of it because we were going to do it the same way as book two. Right, we were going to do three episodes, but, but then we lost some audio, and was, that was back in January. And it was my fault. Seriously, January. We did that oh, in January, no. mid January. Uh, yes, it was January. I take uh. full responsibility for somehow losing my file. That was stupid. But um, let's get started on the book because the it's like a band aid. Like the faster you rip it off, the better it will be. Uh, we start with the prologue. Um, Christian Grey has a flashback to when he finds his dead mom as a four-year-old, I guess the pimp finds her, really, and survives in the house for a number of days without anyone finding the two of them. Abuse pimp comes in and says, fucked up bitch, then calls the cops. The police take baby Christian away, who has lost the ability to speak. Anna wakes him up, and also it was a dream flashback. Chapter one! Uh, so it starts in media res. Anastasia and Christian are on their honeymoon on a French beach. Sudden flashback to aftermath of a proposal-flavored boathouse sex fuck. Anna wants to get married at Christian's parents' house. Flash forward to the French beach. They swim and Anna thinks Christian will fuck her in the ocean, but he doesn't. She's disappointed that he doesn't, and to get back at him, she takes off her bikini top and then falls asleep. Flash back to the wedding day. It's like the end of Evangelion, that anime about robots, where everyone is clapping, but it's a wedding. They fuck in Christian's private jet on the way to their honeymoon after the wedding. Flash forward! Christian is pissed off! But why? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. This book starts out trying to be maybe a little bit more interesting by doing a lot of flash forwards. and Because there is a time skip. I, mean, I think it's two months between when he, he proposes and when they get married. Uh, so there's like a couple cuts back to like things that have happened in between usually... Um, sex scenes or just, you know, their marriage and proposal and whatnot. That pretty much stops happening uh, in the first five chapters, maybe. But it's kind of disorienting here, even though it's, like, you know, slightly more dynamic. Yes. It's also strange to start the book this way. Chapter one also is like, oh, just kidding, it's a flashback. Like, it's, yeah. And it, yeah, the first couple chapters are bad about this. Um, I say... Maybe the one last important thing I'd want to note here is that I think that these flashbacks, cuts, and fades to black are way more common in this book than they have been in the other books. Not Definitely. to say she hasn't used them. She's, there's nothing to flash back to. Right. She didn't exist before the book. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, also, something that is sort of good in this book is that there are a lot more fades to black when they're about to start sex scenes. Right, so you don't have a million sex scenes. Right, but... So sometimes it's nice to be like, oh, here we go, another sex scene. Oh, no, there's not going to be a sex scene. What a relief. <laughs> but sometimes there is a sex scene, so you can never be sure. Right, she keeps you in the dark. <laughs> it's classical conditioning. Like, yeah, she's conditioning you to expect sex, but now she's giving you, like, staggered, unpredictable schedule. Yeah. So you'll always, like, you'll always anticipate it now, <laughs> forever, regardless of what the outcome is. <laughs> Dang. Dang. What have you done to us? Typically you do that with rewards, but you can also do it with punishment. <laughs> Well, I mean, reinforcement. some would see this book sex scenes as a reward. Go figure. To having to read the rest of the prose? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Chapter two. Christian is pissed. Like we mentioned Pistion. at the end of this Pistion, because Anna's titty are out. His security posse can see it all. Yeah, she was on her back, but then she rolled over. She rolled over. Now that, now, now that the secret's out, she has breasts. He's so fucking mad. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, this is French Beach and everybody's topless. Christian and Anna go on a jet ski together, then on a boat. Christian reiterates that he would rather that nobody see Anna's titty. Flashback to a conversation about prenuptial agreements. Christian's dad got publicly mad that Christian wouldn't get on. Couldn't get one. Get one. <laughs> Christian explains to Anna that if Anna left, he would give her all his money. Doesn't seem like it, but that is foreshadowing. Flash forward! Shopping! Before kinky fucking... This is after shopping. Christian tells Anna not to pee. After kinky fucking, Anna discovers she's covered in awful hickey suck bruises all over her body. On purpose, because of Christian. Mainly on her chest, though. Yes. Christian tells Anna not to pee before they have sex. 
He cuffs, he handcuffs uh, her wrist to her opposite ankle uh, and has her knees curled up to her chest so she's in like this little fuckball. And he, <laughs> and he fucks her with like, I guess her feet like jamming into his chest. So that probably, you know, feeds his foot fetish that he secretly has. They both seem to have one. Yeah. I mean, that's good. That I mean, Yeah, it's, it's good to have something you like. You know, even better maybe that they both have it, but it's they both don't need to talk about it. It's just there. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. Do you guys think that they both do have one, or that just no? Like... I think E.L. James has one. That's all. <laughs> I don't think that she does. I think no. I she think just... she does. Oh, okay. I think she just incorporates it for people that do. No, I think that's... she has one. Because the first few times that it showed up in the in the other, I books... think I think it's pretty rare for women to have foot fetishes. It is rare because it's usually about the fetishization of like the stocking and ankle and heel or whatever. But like, I think I feel that she has one. Maybe. Because she writes okay. about it so casually and doesn't mention that it's a fetish. Yeah, it's true. Like, she thinks it's, like, just, like, a normal part of sex life. I mean, good for her, but, I kind like... of feel like that she does it, like, I don't know, I think that it's, like... Because in the first book, she definitely tried to shove in as many different, like, particular... Yeah, like, like common go, kinks. Like, And I felt yeah. like the foot fetish stuff was thrown in, just to, like, to throw a bone to people that have a foot fetish, because she expected someone was probably going to be out there. No, here's the difference. And she's kept it. Anastasia enjoys getting foot plate done on her. It's never Christian who's like, I love your feet, baby. It's always, like, Anne who's like, oh... Yeah, I think Anna definitely... Like, and she, she's also, like, admires his feet sometimes. Like, right. what is it about feet? I think Anna has a secret foot fetish that she doesn't know about. I don't think E.L. James does, though. I think I she's writing like she it does. so people have people have someone to identify with. No, I think that's too, I think that's too intelligent. <laughs> well, we've had this discussion. Yes, okay. so we have. And so let's move on. Anyway, about the pee. So I looked this up, and yeah, it's a thing. I, I remember reading a, a column before about uh, some girl saying she, like, she was really into, like, drinking a lot of water and... Uh, needing to pee and then having her boyfriend fuck her and she was like, uh, now I'm I have a new boyfriend but I still like that stuff because like her boy previous boyfriend like taught her about that. She's like, but now I still love it and I don't know how to broach subjects. But yeah, apparently it's like a thing where the bladder pushes on on the stuff G spot internally, just anything. Oh, just everything. In the internal yeah. structure, I guess. Uh, yeah. I I I looked at a lot of you know teen sex columns on the internet and like you know, I forums or like I just typed in uh, sex with full bladder and you know everyone yeah. was like we love it it's or is this weird and <laughs> people were like weird? no it's fine don't no. just don't but don't do it a lot or two extremes because of course you can get an infection you should always pee when you need to pee right if exactly. you can <laughs> and public service announcement you should pee after you fuck yep. if you're if you've got a vagina um, couldn't hurt for a guy either. Probably wouldn't hurt for a guy either. <laughs> or a penis having person. But yeah, uh, UTIs are a thing commonly are... if you don't pee after sex. Yes. Chapter 3. Anastasia is mad about the hickeys, uh, but notes that she's a hot, sexy woman because of just... Excuse me. A hot, sexy woman because of disposable income. Like, she looks in the mirror and she's like, I look tan tone. My eyebrows have been threaded. Like, I'm really fat. It's like, all right. Um, Christian says he bruised her so she wouldn't get all naked again, uh, which is fucked up. Uh, they make up. P.S. He told her not to pee in chapter two because it makes the orgasm more intense. And initially I was not believing of this, but apparently it's true. Uh, they dance and then they fuck off stage, or is that off page? It's a fade to black. <laughs> There's a flashback to when Aunt, to when Christian shaved Anna's pussy. First she tried but did a bad job, then he <laughs> creepily shaved her and fingered her. Now in the future time, Anna shaves Christian's face, not vagina. They go to an art gallery. Uh, Christian gets her a bracelet with a dumb inscription, and I'm going to read it. Anna, you are my more, my love, my life. Christian. My Christian. <laughs> My Christian. <laughs> no, sorry. It's just Christian. Like Christian. In the car, he feels bad about the marks on her wrists, whilst apparently not giving a shit about those 1,000 hickeys he marred her with earlier, but like, but he's like heartbroken over the wrist thing. Uh, but then uh, he gets a call that someone set his company server room on fire. Okay. So this starts uh, a thing throughout the book, and I think it wasn't quite as present in the other books. But one of the main problems in this book that they have to work through is that Christian, uh, when he gets mad, he punishes Anna in a sex way out of genuine anger 
rather than out of yeah it's never in a play scene fun or love well i mean he or well it is in a play scene but like he, he doesn't... kind of tricks her into like he gets he gets mad at her they argue he's like oh you're so sexy let's go there and she's like oh he's not mad at me anymore they go have sex he does something that she doesn't like and she realizes that he's done it to get back at her yeah and that's bad it is very bad. It's, he's vindictive and manipulative. Yes. Right. Exactly. It, to use sex to get revenge is like kind of fucked up. I mean, that's kind of what he's been doing his whole life, I guess. Like, that's how right. he, he works out his issues with his mother, I guess. Like, he it's wishes like a, he could punish his mother, and it's weird. It's um, really mean of E.L. James to say that, like, oh, Dom's have mommy issues and want to punish you. Like, that's... Ooh. But, um, yeah, I don't know if that's what she's saying or if it's just this is Christian. At least that's the implication. Like, Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, she, she doesn't yeah. talk at all about healthy BDSM relationships. Like, no, she, doesn't she doesn't give any comparison. Like, Elena's fucked up, Christian's fucked up. There's no other people in the scene because they, these people have to be yeah, the other exception. Subs are fucked up too. Yeah, they are. Yeah, their subs are fucked up, yeah. which we'll get to later. And, like, yeah. you never know because they never go to, like, a BDSM club. There's no yeah. discussion about, like, safe play. I don't know. Yeah, it's... There's, like, the pretenses in the first book, and it drops away because it becomes about Christian's character. Right, it becomes about their relationship, which is not... It's it's only externally about BDSM. It, like, in a very dangerous way, becomes, like, a playground for, like, exercising Christian's demons, and, like, Anna trying to work through his problems while he's working through his problems. Yeah. There's, like, a... It's supposed to be, like, I think, like, allegorical or metaphorical, but the way that it's done is not... It just makes it seem like that's how it is, as opposed to, like, this, this is, is the character, yeah, and, like, these... this is what I'm doing with the character. Like, it's like a Heathcliff and Kathy type thing, but rather than saying, oh, it's their fucked up problems, it's like, oh, this is BDSM, and that is yeah. very disagreeable to me. Uh, let's see what else. Um, so the thing about him being mad about the hickeys, or her being mad about the hickeys, not about the cuff marks, and then he has the opposite. Yeah, and he's he doesn't care about the hickeys. He does care about the cuff marks. Seems to be like he intended to give her the hickeys, but not the cuff marks, and so that's why he's worried about the cuff marks, not the hickeys. I mean, the distinction is so weird. I can't understand this guy at all. Like, and that's why Anna doesn't care about the cuff marks, because he didn't mean to, right? But he did mean to give her the hickeys, and that's kind of where she has the huge problem: is is discovering his intention. Like she likes this stuff anyway. Yes, sort of. She doesn't like the hickeys. Right, because it wasn't consensual. She didn't say, Christian, give me a million hickeys. She, she just didn't decided say, to do that. I mean, yeah, she didn't know she was give, she was getting hickeys. Right. And that's the problem. So she couldn't object to it, basically. And so she doesn't have a problem with cuff marks because he, he didn't mean to do that. So it's fine. And then Christian, I can't tell if he's if he, if he's sad because he's like, oh, what have I done to you with these cuff marks? Or if it's because he's remorseful about the hickeys and now he's also remorseful about the cuff marks i don't think he's remorseful about the hickeys whatsoever because of the way he reacts like right afterwards he's like well now you won't be topless idiot like (laughs) yeah i think it's more just like this is just an interpretation um it was something that he didn't intend which means it was something that was out of his control which um yeah that's really what's making him upset yes okay move on okay yes chapter four chapter four Anastasia insists that she will go shopping in, and on the jet ski alone. and on alone on herself by herself, and so it is done. Uh, Anastasia gets Christian an icon camera after calling Jose for advice about it. Uh, Christian gets sad. He admits that he has objectified women in his collateral photos that he took. If you'll remember the last book or two, after talking about things that Christian gets sad about, they tickle and then they fuck. Uh, Christian is sad again because of dangers. Remember, the server room got set on fire. Oh, right. Who did it? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Um, I'm skipping a lot of shit here. Uh, they do more honeymoon stuff. Anastasia talks to Kate over I am, text, email, whatever. Uh, Christian discusses this nightmare that he had about um, Anastasia, where like she leaves and she never comes back, basically. <laughs> Let's see. There's a thing in where Anna goes on the jet ski. Christian didn't want her to drive the jet ski because he was afraid she would fall and die into the water. Uh, Jessie's are dangerous, that's true. Uh, but Anna's, like, kind of... Like, she gets, like, a little thrill out of... Out of disobeying, disobeying him, but then she's also, like, terrified. <laughs> which is very scary. Yeah. Um, that happens a couple times when she's, like, wearing a short dress. She's like, I'm gonna go out in this short dress, goodbye! 
and uh and he, and she's like oh fuck he's gonna be so mad um <laughs> it was more in the last book wasn't it yeah, there's like the turquoise sundress like, yeah that's what i was talking about I remember this that. Is another... also uh this is just a thing they tickle in this chapter and uh tickling is like it's whole a whole other fetish subculture like there are ticklers and ticklies i feel like maybe i've discussed this before but on the, maybe on the podcast but um like there are people who like you know Tickle doms, tickle subs, but it is not BDSM, even though, in my opinion, tickling is torture. <laughs> it is uh, actually used as a form of torture. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a friend in the in the BDSM scene who went to a tickling convention, and when he told them that he was also into BDSM, they were like, what? <laughs> you freak. <laughs> <laughs> That's really mean. Yeah. Um, one comment. I named my first Bloodborne character Tickle Fluffins. All right. <laughs> Chapter five. Chapter five. Uh, Bloodborne's a video game. Anastasia wakes up. Uh, there's some separation anxiety, but it's fine. Uh, Christian and Anastasia jet ski together. Um, they go back to the USA. Uh, there's words. Uh, there's a family barbecue. Uh, there's yet another. Sorry. Yet another boathouse sex fuck is threatened by Christian. Christian lets Anastasia drive his car because she likes it, but then someone tails them, and it's a car chase. Whoa! I, I guess we were okay with that. Um, afterwards, uh, they fucked in the car. There are two other security guys who are not Taylor, but no one cares. We should probably mention like one of their names, isn't that Sawyer? Yeah, Sawyer, because he comes up a lot in the book. He comes up like okay. I mean, Sawyer is like Taylor. Ryan. Yeah. yeah. He Ryan! <laughs> Ryan sounds like a bro. Just like the way that he's kind of described. I kind of imagine the whole security team is just in a big orgy. <laughs> yeah. relationship. I was just about to say, they, I, my immediate thought when I was thinking about Sawyer and Ryan was like, they're gay. Like, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me, but... <laughs> That's fine. Um... <laughs> Uh, the car chase was sort of exciting, I guess. It was a nice yeah. change of pace. It was yeah. a nice she of pace. wrote it all right, not I great. But... Did not like how Christian kept going, like, good job, baby, good girl. Like, woof, woof, like, have a little treat. I don't know, like, I think that that, yeah, that makes me uncomfortable, but also it seems kind of realistic because, like, Anna's really scared and Christian's, like, really That's under true. control and he's just trying to reassure her. I yeah. guess. So. And there's even the time where she's like, I thought this was really funny and I think I forgot to mention it last time. Um, when Christian's like, this guy's going really slow, flash your brights at him. And she's like, but that would make me an asshole. And he's like, so be an asshole. Because they're being chased. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, no matter, it's good that he's supporting her, but I do always just read it as, like, kind of paternalistic. Like, oh, like, women are nervous about cars going fast. Like, I don't think she's nervous about driving fast. I think she's nervous about the chase. Because oh, like, if she drives like, her R8, like, really fast, yeah. and yeah. Christian's like, slow down. Yeah. I think I she likes to do fast, dangerous stuff. <laughs> okay. But she's like freaked out about the um. Well, especially yeah, Bella server... loves to do fast motorcycle in Twilight. It's tied into the server room stuff, and she doesn't know what's, she doesn't know what's okay. going on with that. And that's a running theme that we can talk about later see, too. About I like see. Christian keeps her in the dark about that stuff, which is uh, also bad. But, so um, it's the fact that there's a pursuer. Yeah, I really think that like. But wait, I have to ask you. Couldn't you just say like you're doing a good job instead of like good job, my little girl? Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. I think that's because E.L. James loves the infantilization stuff and, like, the Christian... Age play. I just like the bad writing. I didn't like... like that they were on speakerphone with the security team while he was calling her good girl and baby and stuff. That was oh, yeah. weird to me. But they've already seen They're around yeah. all the time, though, I They're... think. Yeah, I'll get into that later. Okay. Um, They have sex in a car. I, I mean, that had like to happen afterwards. at some point. Yeah. yeah. They, they hide in a parking lot, and he's like, oh, this turns me on. And so they have sex in a car... So, I can't quite remember because I didn't read this again after January, but... Um, well, I know what happens. But... Was it... Did they see, seem like they had a pretty easy time of doing it in a sports car? Yes, they did, yep. in fact. Yep. And, like... <laughs> I've, I've... Maybe I'm a super tiny? I, I don't know. <laughs> someone who isn't me has done this before. Um, if you, it, it, Yeah, if you're small, it's easy. But, like, it's not that easy. <laughs> I think, like... I mean, and it's a sports car. It's a sports car. Tiny. Wouldn't her head be hitting yeah. the top of it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's chapter six. Chapter six. BDSM fucking at home. Anastasia wonders for the 1,000th time about who could want to hurt Christian. Uh, they watch CCTV footage that the tech guy gives to Christian about who burned the server room, and it's clearly Jack Hyde who burned the server room. Anastasia IDs him. He wants to do the hurting to Christian. That was pretty lucky, but... 
and it just happened to 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 frolic in and sit on Christian's lap when he was reviewing the CCTV <laughs> footage, and Christian like let her look at it instead of being like, "No, no I must shield you from this this horror." Mm -hmm. And she was like, "Hey, I know this is Jack Hyde, but that's how fiction works. There are coincidences." I, so it is. I think it's weird because I feel like the reason it feels like it's in here is just so you know Anna has something to do. Because I think Christian could have ID Jack Hyde without that, without her presence. He he could have easily been like, "That's Jack." But Hyde. he totally didn't do it. Like he couldn't do it in that moment. In the book, I feel like he book. didn't. He didn't right, see right. Jack Hyde as much. Yeah, she saw he, him a lot more. I, that's so true, but he, he hated him because like he made a pass at his wife, and I mean, she just recognized the fucking ponytail, didn't she? Oh really? Wasn't he like so. wearing so, yeah. a wig or something? No, he was wearing a hat or something. What she says. However, it's the line hair. of his jaw and the earrings in shape of his shoulders. He's the right build too. He must be wearing a wig, or he's cut and dyed his hair. All right, never mind. Oh, okay. She's just she's just more familiar with the general shape of him, whereas Christian yeah. would only recognize his, his hair. External characters. Yes. yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so they have sex. Uh, he puts a butt plug in her and and fucks her, not in the butt. Um, Anna's like, oh, is he going to fuck me in the butt? And he says, no, Anna, I can read your thoughts. And no, I'm not going to fuck you in the butt. <laughs> not no, this I'm time. I'm not going to fuck you in the butt. I can read your thoughts, Anna. <laughs> so, he's not going to fuck her this time. He just puts a butt plug in her and fucks her, her pussy. Um, and he blindfolds her, too. He ties her to the table. It's, eh. Yes, they're in the red room. Yeah, they're in the red room. So, I wondered why she didn't put any butt fucking in here. And I wonder if maybe that's just too much for the moms. Who are yeah, I think it's too much for the moms. I think moms are willing to... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think my aunt listens to this podcast and she's a mom. I think that <sighs> they're able... I think most people are able to put up with like a little bit of that. Like, okay, maybe a small vibrator. Okay, maybe a finger. But like, you know, an entire man's member is a little bit much to take right away. I feel like that is seen as a very violent act. One that one that women generally do not enjoy. Some women do. Yeah, some women do like it a lot. But I think it's generally like totally yeah. man pleasure and yep. a man desire. And and with this one Christians is like this is this butt plug is just for you cuz I don't <laughs> oh. feel it. Oh, I see. So then it makes like the book actually desirable to women. Okay. Yeah. That Chapter makes sense. 7. Chapter 7. Uh Anastasia and Christian eat. Uh, they watch The X-Files, and Christian flips out, quote-unquote, about Anastasia having kissed someone as a teen. Uh, this becomes, and I'm using this term very loosely because it's not really, it becomes a kind of slut-shaming verbal play scene slash tease and denial thing that ends in fucking. Like, oh, like you kissed a guy? What'd you do? Did you get to third base? Was it like this? We're not gonna fuck. <laughs> Actually, we are. So we're, we were That's able... the whole book. Yeah, it's the whole book. No, it's not. It's chapter seven. Um, I think we, all of us, but it was probably Terry Doom or Chad, identified the episode of The X-Files. It's the first yeah. one. It's, it's the, the first pilot. one. It's the pilot episode. And we were they, able to tell because Mulder says some line. Uh, he says something FBI's about... most unwanted. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, which is a direct quote from the pilot. Um, okay. <laughs> Anastasia goes back to work. Uh, Anastasia didn't change her last name to Gray. She's still Anastasia Steele at work. And her email is the Anastasia.steel at sap.com or whatever. So Christian shows up at her workplace to fight her. It's a really uncomfortable two to four pages of them fighting. Like, it's awful. Um, There's Ugh. more emails after that. Yeah. Then they have a st stupid quabbling at home, like pages of arguments. Christian threatens to make her the boss of SIP, and I can only read that as a threat because of reasons I'll say later. But then suddenly Gia, who's their architect... Um, for the house remodeling, uh, mentioned at the end of book two, uh, book two, not book one, shows up, um, and Anastasia tarts up because she's jealous and she's going to show Gia that she is the sexy woman who is queen of Christian's desires. When we recorded the first time, I think we were all like super uncomfortable with the uh, way that Christian was dealing with the name change thing, because mm -hmm. he was just ridiculous about it. Like, yeah, he's basically saying, I want everybody to know that you belong to me! Yeah, oh, he literally seven. says, like, I want you people to know, like, I want you to be branded. It's yeah. really fucked. I want to just find it and read it very briefly. Anna has, like, perfectly fine reasons Yeah, she's for... like, this is how everybody knows me. I don't want people to know that the owner, to, like, think of me as the wife of the owner of the company. Yeah. yeah. Totally she fine. wants to retain her independence, yeah. and Christian is totally against it. 
Wife, I sent the email below and it bounced. And it's because you haven't changed your name. Something you want to tell me? This is our first day back at work. <laughs> That's funny. Um, like, I sent an email to an email address yeah. I assume you have. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Gray, huh? I see you. I see you. I feel like I he knew this was going to happen. And he yeah, was just he like, anticipated like, something you'd find her. I'm send this email and I bet it's going to bounce. Fucking bitch. <laughs> Please don't tell me you've interrupted your day after three weeks away to come over here and fight with me about my name. I'm not a freaking asset, she thinks. He shifts and crosses his legs. Not exactly fight, no. Uh, Christian, I'm working. No, Christian, that, that, that. how is this not about me? He cocks his head to one side, genuinely perplexed. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the other thing. He's, he's like, it's about me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all about me. Which yeah. is exactly what you expect then he's from like, sort of, like, narcissist. Do you is. know, do you want to know why you got the job, Anastasia? What do you mean? The management here gave you Hyde's job to babysit. They didn't want the expense of hiring a senior execu executive when the company was mid-sale. They had no idea what the new owner would do with it once it passed into his ownership. And wisely, they didn't want any expensive redundancy. So they gave you Hyde's job to caretake until the new owner, namely me, took over. What are you saying? I'm horrified. As you should be. Like... So he's just like, guess what? I control everything, and you're my wife, bitch. He's like, master of the universe. Master of her universe. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, okay. Chapter 8. Continuing. Chapter 8. When Christian leaves the room, Anastasia creepily confronts the architect, Gia, for showing interest in Christian. It's, like, really fucked up. He's like, she's like, I know you like my husband, but I'm the one in charge here. And you're gonna fucking do what I say, or else! And she gets, like, really... The architect it's the cycle of abuse. It's the cycle of abuse. That's right. She's she's punched on by Christian, and she punches down to other women. Um, Christian, after Gia leaves, Christian is very paranoid that Anastasia's gonna leave him, and that's why he's freaking out over the name thing. Uh, they shower, fuck, and have a haircut in whatever order. I think it's that order. Uh, Anastasia sees Taylor and Mrs. Jones kissing in secret. But not really. It was kind of like an obvious secret that apparently everyone knew about. Uh, Christian says that awful, I'll promote you to the head of SIP thing again. And it implies that she sort of wants Christian to sub for her, like sexually punish him to get back at him the way he does to her. But he refuses, like, a double standard much? Like, <laughs> no, I can punish you when I'm mad at you, but you can't do I anything I mean, to I me. could see if that's, you know, like kind of a, tr a tr uh, trigger for him. Having been abused, that he would not... I think that's fine. But it's strange, because he doesn't... He's said repeatedly that he doesn't see what happened with Mrs. Robinson as abusive. There's a, there are a lot of huge holes in logic with I that. I think that's him being in denial, but oh, still not... But fine. He's in denial about the, it being abuse, but maybe he doesn't understand why he finds it yeah. to be so distasteful for him to sub. Yes, I think there is a huge cognitive dissonance thing here, like, oh, it's okay that you do it, but it's not okay that I do mm -hmm. it. Shaving, the, I forgot when they, when they were doing the vagina shaving. shaving and the face shaving. Shaving is very interesting from a BDSM standpoint because it can be <laughs> seen as both sub and dom activities. Uh, yes, true. You are both controlling someone, someone's appearance. You have, uh, you have, okay, sorry. If you're shaving a person, you are serving them. You are serving them. You are, you are doing something for them. You are taking, taking care of them. Um, you are also, uh, controlling how they look. You are controlling a very sharp blade near yes. them. You are making, there's a lot of trust exchange. Um, it's really cool. Yes. But they didn't really... It's a cool metaphor for BDSM in general, but of course they didn't at all uh, explore that, so we won't either. I mean, I think <laughs> that, you know, she she touches on why it's sexy, like she puts it in there because it is sexy, but she doesn't right. explain it. She, she doesn't explain it, maybe she doesn't know. Like, why. it didn't get a huge... It got like a couple pages, yeah. like two at most, um, the actual act. Yeah, and she also cuts Christian's hair, and it's it's yes. another you know it's a service she's providing for him. Right. And they don't do a lot of service BDSM except no, for don't. that kind of stuff, like you know serving him drinks or I mean I mean like basic housewife stuff. Right. Cooking could be considered that. I feel like the servitude um, interest them. in BDSM <laughs> is not well represented in this book. I don't think it's what people think of when they think of BDSM. Yes, they don't. They probably don't think of it, but the power dynamics there. But specifically because she's like a bratty sub, you're yeah. probably we're not going to see much of that. Chapter, Chapter nine. nine. Christian will go on a business trip to New York, and he fired five people over the Charlie Tango crash in book two, which Anastasia is aghast at. 
Uh, Layla's gun is in his desk. Mm. Seven pages of... Oh, that's foreshadowing, by the way. Uh, there are seven fucking pages in this chapter of work emails. Um, Anna begins abusing the help, i.e. the security. Um, and it's literally a black woman. Uh, her name is Belinda Prescott, and Anna has yet to warm to Belinda Prescott. I'm sorry, she's abusing Belinda Prescott because Anastasia wants to go out drinking with Kate, and uh, Christian said don't do that because he's gone on a New York trip and dangerous things are happening with Jack Hyde. There is stuff in here about Elliot's uncontrollable dick, or hypothesized, because Kate thinks he's cheating, and there's stuff about also uncontrollable danger. Uncontrollable dicks and uncontrollable danger. <laughs> Christian's mad that she went out, like, we thought he would be. Um, somebody broke into the house, however, when Anna was off doing the naughty thing, and it was Jack Hyde who broke into the house when she was doing the naughty thing. The so naughty she was right to do the naughty leaving thing. Leaving the house, yeah. Yes. Okay, so, yeah, let's talk about Prescott. Yeah. Yeah, uh, do you guys have anything to say? I hate to play devil's advocate here. Okay, but somebody needs to do it. I feel like Prescott is put in here for diversity. She's put in here to get fired later. She's introduced to get fired so that, you know, Taylor doesn't have to get fired. So that fired. there's a conflict, and yes, that Taylor does not have Someone to else that we've grown to love doesn't get fired. Uh, I see this happen a lot. Like, for instance, in Mad Max, they introduced those ladies at the end so that they could all die. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the last chase scene. So, sorry, she does get fired. Spoiler alert. Um, and I wonder if Anna is mad at her because she's a woman. If that's part of it. I think it's because Belinda refuses to relate to her as a fellow woman. She's in a position that is not typically filled by women in general. She is, you know, part of the security escort. She's described as, mm, I'm just going to guess because I don't want to open the book. <laughs> She's kind of like the, the stony, silent type. She doesn't take any of Anna's shit, which I think if you normally had a female guard, you'd be like, oh, like, can I just go out with my girlfriend? And she'd be like, yeah, girl, yeah. <laughs> but the fact that she's black is almost kind of like a a wall so that Anastasia cannot relate to her. And that's what's so disturbing about this, because, like, this idea that race is what is going to divide you and what makes her somehow essentially different from other women. Um, and this is, like, a really intense reading, and I promise we're gonna get... <laughs> there's another chapter where this plays in more. Like, it's just weird. Like, wh why does... You have to... I don't know if E.L. James did this on purpose. She probably didn't, but it's very kind of, like, suspicious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, I, I agree with you, Cherry Doom. She her, her function in the book is to be cannon fodder. So she can, like, so there's someone to fire that's not... Right, but isn't that fucked up, though? Right, but that's what I'm going to say. Like, like why couldn't it be fucking Sawyer or yeah. Ryan? Ryan, yeah. who only shows up, like, one yeah. time. But, like, yeah, the point, like, the fact that she goes out of her way to identify her as African-American has Anna treat her a particular way, which, whether or not uh, E.L. James is aware of it, is totally Anna just, like, you know, being extremely overprivileged. Can I cut in for one second? Sure. The fact that she is unaware of it is a reflection of racism nonetheless. Even if it is done without intention, it's a reflection of the fact that that's how things are in our society. Like, you can right. do this un unthinkingly, and the fact that you can't do it unthinkingly is extremely awful. Yeah, like, we can, we can talk about this a bit more later, but yes. um, none of the main staff, and, you know, in a one meta, one meta reason like Sawyer, Taylor, Ryan, uh, they don't suffer any real consequences for anything that goes wrong when they're, like, on their watch is because, you know, they're fan favorites or whatever. But also, they are, like, oh, wait, guys, that doesn't really help. Yeah. Her, that doesn't help her and situation. Like, isn't um, Taylor, like, ex-FBI or something ex like that? Yeah. Ex-military, right. Yeah. So he's, I mean, not that, okay, that doesn't work anymore, because if you're in the military, that doesn't necessarily imply, like, a class difference, but... Veterans have... But, there's a stigma against veterans, but like there's a stigma against veterans. They suffer a lot, but like yeah, but, anybody can join the military. Not everybody can get a nice job with the CIA or whatever. So that's why I was thinking if he was from the. But Sawyer no. is ex FBI. On the other hand, yeah, Sawyer is ex FBI. So he's seen as more of an asset. He happened with his position and privilege in life to get a job with the FBI that maybe Prescott couldn't get. Just the FBI about is that. most unwanted. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also like. So Anastasia throughout the book, because there's a thread of her, you know, being becoming more assertive. But her, like, her being assertive most of the time, and especially in this situation with Prescott, to me seems more like she's just, um... Subjugating those who are below her. Yeah, she's sort of, 
understanding like how Christian operates and rather than reading it as, you know, abuse of power or like being overprivileged, she's just saying like, I'm being more assertive, but it's because she has the money and the position to do it. Like if she did this when she was still a college student, people wouldn't put up with her, but yeah. it's because she's rich and powerful now. Yeah. yeah. Well, this and, reminds me, and I'm going to keep this very succinct, I'm going to try. I read some of African-American intersectional feminist literature, in particular Bell Hooks wrote about, um, it's in her book, which I don't even know if this is the right title, but it's like, the gist of it is everyone should be a feminist. And she talks in like the second or third chapter, very close to the start, about how a system of domination never works. So even if like women, let's say it's white women, because I think that was kind of the implication, are put into power, that's still a system of domination. And if mm -hmm. a child, woman, man, or anybody is suffering from the effects of systemic domination, that is what feminism seeks to destroy. Yep. Anastasia is not being a good feminist here. She's both, she's like intimidating Gia. She's using Christian's money to sort of secure her position as a, like a, a special object, a kind of holy grail of sorts, but yet still an object and punches down, quote unquote, my term. She punches down onto other women who are beneath her. Either they're less rich than that her. That work for her. That work for her, right. Because they're in servitude to her. So she's like, oh, Christian abuses me, I can abuse them. They're in servitude to me. Doesn't matter who they are, what they're doing. Like, she's... Gia doesn't even... Gia just shows up, and, like, it seems like Gia's attracted to Christian. And But it, throughout the book, we know that, like, every woman is attracted to Christian. But that's the one woman that Anna decides to single out and, like, beat up. She just straight up goes, like, don't fuck with my husband. I'll destroy you. <laughs> and it's, like, really unseemly. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Anyway, I think we can move on. Chapter 10! Oh. Uh, police come and question Anna after Jack Hyde is found in the house. I guess Taylor or someone punched him. And yeah, he got knocked out cold. Um, it's, and it's not police, it's like a specific detective, I think his name is Detective Clark. Right. This is where Ryan comes in. Ryan's the one that, uh, stops Jack. Okay. He's alone. He's there alone. I see. Uh, aside from Mrs., um, whatever her name is. Uh, the, Jones. Yeah. Uh, Christian is back from New York, and he's mad, but then he's sad, and then they shower. Jack's motive was kidnapping Anna, and we know this because, um, we find out later <laughs> that Christian has, like, a ransom note from him, or, like, they found some things like duct tape or whatever. Mm. Duct tape and enough tranquilizers to take down a whale, something like that. <laughs> uh, Anna's bummed that Prescott is driving her to work for safety reasons. Why are you bummed that Prescott's doing it? You fucker. <laughs> Um, there's some media activity over the break-in thing, so they have to go in the back entrance. Uh, Anna's at work. There are many pages of angry emails between her and Christian, but Anastasia is rightfully angry with him because he was withholding a lot of information from her. Uh, there's a brief conversation with, I guess it's Detective Clark, and then Anastasia goes home. They keep, she keeps mentioning paparazzi in the media. Yeah. yeah. And it's never really... No. Like, she's like, it's just like a really throwaway sentence, like, oh, the, the paparazzi's here, so we gotta go around the back, or there's some paparazzi at the beach. Yeah, oh, Christian threatens her about the topless thing. He's like, the paparazzi could have taken a picture of your tits! But, like, that never happens. D is there something about her being on, like, the front of a tabloid some somewhere? But he just threatens her about it. Okay. I think, it isn't in one of the previous books, like, isn't... The only time that they're ever in a newspaper is when they're at the graduation. I think so. And it's just Christian Grey seen with... Yeah, friend. Yeah. yeah, like it doesn't seem like Christian Grey. He's not. His name is recognized as a powerful businessman, but he's not like a super famous celebrity. Well, he was like an eligible bachelor, though. Yeah. He's not like. He's I mean, there's there's some aspect that E.L. James is trying to write him as Bruce Wayne, but it yeah. doesn't it doesn't happen. Like he's basically like a businessman. I mean, man. she's trying to, but she just doesn't go into like you know the, the being hounded by the paparazzi or yeah. Anything about that? It's just, it's just a weird aspect. Are you theorizing about it? Our... He's just like Batman. Yeah, he we has a secret. Yeah, yeah, this is our first We've, theory. This is our very first theory. Was that he was no, Batman. but it's so, <laughs> it's so perfect. Like now in this book too. Like he's Bruce Wayne. Like, it's for, I, but he doesn't fight crime. Bruce he, Wayne. But he takes matters into his own hands as far as justice goes. Often, many times, using his money. To... Well, I mean, we've had Val Kilmer and George Clooney as Batman. Maybe we'll see Jamie Dornan or <laughs> Robert Jamie Pattinson. Dornan. They both make awful Batmans. Have you, have you seen George Clooney as Batman? He was a pretty bad Batman. Yeah, he was awful too. I remember that movie. Don't remind me. Well, come on, right? Okay. Okay. So Chapter we've got, 11. Chapter 11. Christian is in jeans. We'll punish. Mad, then sad, then makeup, then food. Makeup isn't like they made up. Okay. Uh, drinking. 
kinky fucking. Or just, they're just safe words, and it's over an orgasm denial scene. It's not even really a scene. It's just something that he does. It's a scene. Really? What What do you count as a scene? In well, like, scene? what I would count as a scene he, is if they both sat down before him, and he was like, okay, this is going to be an orgasm denial scene. They I'm never do really that, come. ever. Yeah, but, like, so that doesn't count as a scene to me, because they didn't at all discuss it. They didn't at all go over it, and so suddenly he just, like, is doing it because he's a fucking sadist. He's abusive. I found this to be, um, as the kids say, triggering, but... If you're not familiar with that term, um, it's, like, very traumatic to read. Uh, it's on 248 to 250, and I will just... I... Uh, uh, oh, you don't think so? <laughs> I I wonder, like, is it abusive? He doesn't... Okay. Okay, let's just look at it, and you can tell me. Okay. He says... Okay, so he's been, like, bring... He's edging her. This is, like, some edge play. Um, you don't each... know what edging is. It's when you when you bring someone to when they're almost about to have an orgasm. Right, you bring them you to off. the edge. Yes. And then you back off. And then you do it do it over and over. It's, you uh... can do it on, over any time period, really. Yeah. But for us, it's just a half or a couple minutes. Um, he says, each time I stop, it feels more intense when I start again, right? She's like, oh, please. My nerve endings are screaming for a release, says the narration. He runs his own downline. You're you're the most frustrating woman I've ever met. No, 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 she says in her head. Christian, I never promised to obey you. Please, please. He moves in front of me, grabs me from behind, and pushes it, making me gasp, his groin rubbing into my button of his jeans, pressing into me barely, containing his erection. Uh, you drive me crazy, he whispers. Um, he's grinding on her. Again, he denies me. I can't help but feel I'm being punished. I'm helpless, and he's ruthless. Tears spring to my eyes. I don't know how far he's going to take this. Please, I whisper once more, but his, he gazes down at me, implacable. He's just going to continue. For how long? Can I play this game? No, 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 no. I can't do this. I know he's not going to stop. He's going to continue to torture me. His hand travels down my body once more. No. And then she cries a bunch. I turn away from him. This is not love. It's revenge. Red, I whisper. Red, red. The tears course down my face. No, he gasps. No, Anna, please, no. She sobs inconsolably. She's overwhelmed. <laughs> Yeah, all right. I guess that makes sense. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm. What I'm, what I'm saying is like, he stops immediately when she says words. Yeah, when she says words, that's good. But obviously, what he's doing out of anger, I guess. But <laughs> it would be okay if they talked about it. If she'd agreed to it, if he told her she was going to do it beforehand, she was going in completely uninformed as to what he was going to do to her. He, she only knew arbitrarily that it probably involved punishment because it's going to be in the Red Room. But what really kills me about this section is the fact that she says things like, I know he's not going to stop, and... But she, no. he does stop. But she says she... Well, but but she without doesn't, safe wording. Like, he was... But that's he what the safe word's for! Wee! What was that? I think that was his chair oh, breaking. Okay. Oh. I shouldn't lean back in it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no I'm okay. sure it's fine. But that's what the safe word's for. To make it stop. Does she think he's not going to stop if she's safe word? That's what it sounds like. And the fact... I mean, the putting yourself in that mindset of, like, the sub who thinks the safe word is not going to stop things, I think that's fucking terrifying. Like, it just reads as, like, kind of weirdly rapey. And, like, I know, okay, it's an illusion because she's safe words and it's fine. I wonder if... If it's more of something where she doesn't want to say for it because that's like giving up, which is something that I know yeah, can be a problem with it. subs. Yeah, like they don't say, oh, I don't want to, you know, make the Dom stop something they're enjoying, even though I want it to stop. So maybe that's it. Right. Um, it just doesn't feel like play because, like, there is like this whole thing where if it's part of scene, it's part of fantasy, and you say, okay, like, let's do a revenge scene, because you were bad earlier, like our rules say. And then, but she could have said, like, yes, that's fine, or no. Like, he's, she's never given a choice. She's never given a choice. Yes, you're right. So that's Definitely. why it bothers me. But okay. I can see why it's not as bad as it might seem. I, I agree. Now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, the connection between Jack and Christian is that they're both from Detroit. Quest. Chapter 12, because they're both from Detroit, slash born there, maybe. Stupid hot and cold bickering. The Christian has a nightmare. A uh, weird, creepy, quickie sex that is awful, considering the last chapter. Basically, he wakes up from a nightmare and he's like, oh, let's fuck now. And yeah. he just, like, comes in her and she's like, oh, okay. But then he, like, like uh, pays it forward. I need you. Yeah. I need you. I need you to get my dick. <laughs> um, then he, like, brings her orgasm, I guess. Uh, Anna does not have a nightmare here, but she wakes up and has separation anxiety. Christian is playing the piano sadly. Meanwhile, uh, the next day, they fly to Aspen for vacation. Surprise! The whole family plus Kate is coming! There's some speculation with the Jack Hyde and Mrs. Robinson connection. But is I there? don't... 
Is that maybe. your speculation? Oh, maybe that's my spec. I don't know. Okay, well, this is not in the book, but I feel like there might be a connection between Jack Hyde and Mrs. Robinson. That I thought was... so, too, but... The author may have decided at the end, no, we can't have this because it makes Mrs. Robinson evil, more evil than she is. Yeah. But I... Okay. I want to talk about something. Mm-hmm. Okay, first of all, Yale James keeps saying that things that Christian are doing are erotic. She. This is a. This is something that she describes... Wait, erotic or erratic? Erotic. Okay. Like when she's when they're having sex, he says, "This is so erotic." Well, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We know it's erotic. It's erotica. Well, it's fucking yeah. Please think of something else to say. It's. I mean, she's okay. She says a lot of things, so you know, I guess erotic can slip in there sometimes. It's just so like it's it's not helpful. <laughs> uh, another thing is that. Um, Christian's family, the staff, are all, like, super happy to know that Christian and Anna are fucking all the time. I, maybe this is just me being a prude and a weirdo who doesn't want to know about anybody else's sex life, unless it's in fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, Christian's like, okay, they're on the plane. Everybody's there on the plane. And Christian's like, he scoops Anna up and throws him, her yeah, over his shoulder. Like, he's like, me down. let me down, let me down. I can just, like, see her beating her little fists on his back. Christian, put me down! Uh, and all, and the family are like, yay! They're, they're, they're like, laughing. all smiling, they're all laughing, and then he, like, carts her off to the, to the bedroom. <laughs> I just find it so weird. To, like, you know, I, I talked about this when he, like, had Anna in his lap, uh, in front of the family. Yeah, that's I don't weird. know. I just, I just find it, it very uncomfortable like maybe or maybe these people are just you know more comfortable with their sexualities than i am <laughs> maybe this hi- family is hiding more secrets than we know yeah maybe because there's the whole like yeah. she wa- like uh anna walks in on elliot and kate and all sorts of other things we could probably come up with some weird theory oh you're saying it's like a these... big crazy manson family type Secret sex cult yeah uh adopted children oh yeah they're not related <laughs> but not related <laughs> Um, Mrs. Robinson broke the rules, which is why uh, Grace punished her. Actually, you know, we wondered, we wondered about that with Ray, like her quote unquote stepdad. Yeah. And like you have to wonder <laughs> Holy at shit. some point. Nobody's related. Nobody's related. Except Kate and Ethan. Everyone can fuck. Anna and her mom, but. Yeah, but she doesn't it. count because she's not there. She so, does eventually, but yeah. So you have to wonder. I mean, about that. Um, yeah. Why yeah, can why can they not be all related? It, why Nia, does she make it so bad? Nia is well, like, because that's that is a Twilight. Because Twilight. <laughs> Nia is not adopted, right? No, no she's, she's adopted. She's adopted. Okay. All the more. Yep. Anyways. And now Kate and Anna. Uh, spoiler: later on, they will be related by law. See? They've been drawn into the Gray family. Yeah, they've been drawn in. Uh, chapter thirteen. Christian's wealth looms and ta- looms and taunts me. Anastasia doesn't. You use his wealth for so many things that you don't even fucking think about now <laughs> and take for granted. They are in Aspen shopping with the girls. Uh, Kate suspects Elliot is cheating. Anastasia has a weird conversation with Elliot and then also suspects it. But then Elliot pro- proposes to Kate. All that funny cheating behavior was actually him picking out a wedding ring. Who with, else? With but who Gia, else but the Gio Mateo. Who Elliot had a previous relationship the with. The yeah. slut. <laughs> <laughs> who she had a pre- who he who they fucked before, but apparently Elliot is like a ladies' man. Whatever. Chapter fourteen. How many more chapters are there? There are eleven. Kate says yes. While clubbing with the posse, <laughs> Anastasia slaps a guy who's getting too fresh with her ruby. Uh, Christian assaults the fresh guy who's like described to look like a Neanderthal. Uh, then dances with Anastasia. Uh, they go home. Anna gets really drunk. Christian doesn't fuck her. And he gets drunk and Christian as fucker and takes off her makeup. Chapter 15, fucking breakfast. In that order. Two different activities. Vacation is now over. Anastasia keeps delaying appointments at work. That's foreshadowing. Uh, there's some emails. Layla and a mysterious person show up at the office and want to speak to Anastasia. They Christian makes Anna masturbate at the hotel. Or at the, the Colorado thing. Yeah. I want to see you. That's just the thing. <laughs> that happened, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's cool, I guess. Um... Okay. Chapter 16. This is a biggie. Let's go. Uh, Prescott, the black... Or, sorry, Belinda Prescott, a black woman bodyguard who Anastasia is skeptical of, lets Anastasia know that Layla is on the watch list for not being in contact with Anastasia. Like, per Christian's orders. 
Anna makes Prescott let in as it let Layla inside anyways after like this weird um exchange that's like, where were you? Belinda, I was in the bathroom. Ha, ah, everyone has to pee sometime. Oh, she's human. Wow. Anyway, so Anastasia emails Christian to let him know that she is defying him, as opposed to before when she didn't. Uh, Layla and a other sub that Christian had named Susie come to gop at Anastasia and wonder, what does she have that I don't? Uh, Susie leaves. Layla stays and apologizes, asks permission to see Christian to thank him for helping her back when she was crazy and paying for her art school now, which we didn't know about. I loved Geoff, my boyfriend Jeff. who died. Geoff? Jeff. Jeff. Shit! <laughs> I loved Jeff. Jeff. My boyfriend who died this year. I loved my husband. And one other. Is that a continuity error? She says, I loved my boyfriend who died this year. I loved my husband and one other. So does that mean to say she loved her husband Christian Grey and her boyfriend Jeff who died this year? Wait, what? I loved Jeff, my boyfriend who died this year. I loved my husband. And one other. She loved her husband and her boyfriend who died this year. Oh, and one other. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense. That doesn't... I was really confused by that. It sounds like she was saying her boyfriend was also her husband. Like, wouldn't it sound better if she was like, I love Giop, my boyfriend who died this year. I loved my boyfriend. And one other. Isn't that how that normally goes? Uh, she's listing off people she's, yeah i love my boyfriend i love, love my, my husband, husband and i love, love one other because oh. you remember she was married at the time that she had the mental break and they got a divorce and so she's had she's but had a new why boyfriend didn't, but wait but wait couldn't she fucking say her husband's name then or did el james just not make up her husband's name like i don't even remember if it was said i i think it might have been but <laughs> it's dumb it's so dumb like it's not clear i love my boyfriend i love my husband and one more no or i love my boyfriend I also loved my husband. I also loved one other. Like, it could be clear. Anyway, I'm sorry that's the only time we'll complain about grammar. Anyways, Christian, upon entering uh, Anastasia's office, because of course he ran over when he heard this happened. Yeah, it's, fires... like, it's kind of like a countdown to uh, Christian starting. He's just like, she knows he's going to be here. And right. so she's like, got so she's like to talk to Layla to see what she wants. Right. So she kind of like puts it all in. And then, of yeah. course, he's impending christian doom anyway when he gets there he fucking fires prescott on the spot and it's a hundred percent anna's fault yep uh layla says something like i had to know that you were okay after christian like yells at her and he like fucking screams at her and it's scary and maybe i'll read it later he tries to immediately hustle her out and like hustle her out of the state no less like get to the airport right now and anna says um well she had plans to stay in seattle and do things so like maybe you shouldn't rush her out and he's like no and then he's like Okay. <laughs> and then Leo says, this is the Christian Grey I know. But he's so fucking scary in the scene. He's just like, um, it's just creepy. Uh, Anastasia questions Christian about all the stuff. I don't know what that's referring to. He tries to joke it away. It's some chilling shit. Oh, it's like all the stuff of like, I'm showing up and controlling your life. And he tries to joke and like, take the spotlight off it. Anna notes, uh, Christian, I'm tired of having the same argument with you. I quote 346. What's on 346? Where the fuck is this? Oh, here we go. You know, Anastasia elucidates, I do something you don't like, and you think of some way to get back at me, usually involving some of your kinky fuckery, which is either mind-blowing or cruel. I shrug, resign. This is exhausting and confusing. Mind-blowing, he asks. What was mind-blowing? And, like, he's trying to distract her. Like, she just said he was doing. Like, but it's... Yep. Fucked. It all goes to shit when he uses sex to manip manipulate yeah. her. And oh, he still I just succeeds. Said that. <laughs> and he, he still succeeds, succeeds in, in yeah. distracting her with sex. Like I thought that maybe this was gonna be a breakthrough, but and then in the next scene it's just like they're doing it. Yep. It's like control Anna, it's all about control. His tongue renews its erotic incursion. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Yeah, nice. so like he's doing it again, I guess, but like I can't tell if she doesn't say for it this time, so I can't tell if this doesn't count for his punishment fucking, or if she's just okay with it now for some reason. I can't figure out... It's just like a glimmer of, like, sentience in this awful book. And, like, there's maybe, like, one more upcoming, but I won't spoil it. Like, she, she points it out to him. She's like, you can't do this. And then I can't tell if this is supposed to be a good thing 
or bad things? I'm going to say bad. I'm going to say it's like a transitioning point because of things that are going to happen later. Like, oh, I've noticed we're having the same argument. We're literally treading water like we have been for the past three books. I wonder why it's like that. And then she shows that she's still not able to like, okay. fully control it. But All then right. I'll talk about it later in a later chapter. So, Prescott? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, there's a couple things going on in this chapter that we should probably talk about. Yes, First, please. let's talk about Prescott. So here, uh, there's an, a line earlier. I think it's in the chapter where Prescott is driving Anna to work, where Anna says, Anna thinks to herself, Prescott has been quiet. I think I prefer her this way, which is a fucked up thing to say. It is fucked up. Can we talk about what's tied up in all that? Yeah. Historically, whether or not you want to admit this or not, listeners, um, you better just leave right now if discussions about race bother you. Black women's voices, black men's voices, black people's voices, um, if they're not, you know, gendered, have been silenced throughout the whole history of this country, maybe even the history of civilization, as far as, like, Western civilization goes, the white kind. It's creepy that she says, I prefer her not to talk. Do I have to sort of connect the dots for you? You I mean, it's creepy that she doesn't get to have any say in the book, and then she gets fired. Like, she's totally eclipsed by every other person in the book. I feel like she's talking a lot anyway. Yeah! Like, no. she, and the only thing she's doing is is stuff that Christian's telling her. Be mad at Christian if you're yeah. mad at anyone. Like, really. That's really probably the thing that bothered me the most about this comment, is that, like, Prescott doesn't say very much at all. Right. Like, she barely talks to Anastasia, and mm -hmm. Anastasia's like, I'm glad she's not saying anything. This is kind of a, <laughs> a pithy comparison, but remember there was that study about, like, when women speak up in, like, classroom situations, like, the normal amount that they do, which is maybe, like, 20% of the time, they're perceived to be speaking up, like, more than 50% of the yeah. time. It's all about, like, what is your predefined amount of space that you're allowed to take up that everyone else says you can take up? And then what's the... What is it? You're not there to offer an opinion. You're not there to provide guidance, even if you're definitely qualified to do so, and I think Prescott is qualified to do so, given that she's in the fucking security outfit. I think another thing that um, is worth pointing out is how badly Prescott is abused by the power dynamic here, because Anna gives her a direct order, which of course she's going to follow because she's the husband she of Christian Grey, and then Christian fires her for listening to Anna, and it's right. because Christian wants to assert that he has more power. Right. And like, either way, There's... Prescott suffers severe consequences. And then Let's let's note right here. Prescott never comes back. Like Anna doesn't ever get Prescott rehired. Like there's never any reconciliation. I was She's so gone. sure she that Anna was gonna be like, okay, but you can't fire Prescott. That's yeah. shitty. That was all my fault. Nope. Prescott's just gone. I was really surprised. Yep. But I guess I shouldn't have been. I mean, oh, I had a thought about that. So I read a book. It's about like abusive tactics that abusive men use, and something that has been observed in certain situations is when you have a family unit, that's to say in like a heterosexual one, a husband, a wife, and a son, and maybe a daughter, maybe some other kids, usually what happens is that the son will try to copy the abusive dad's behavior, but then what happens is the dad will abuse the son because it's the dad's ability to abuse the mom. It's nobody else's privilege. This is almost kind of like that. Like, it's not Anastasia's privilege, it's Christian's completely. And so to punish her, he removes her. You will, no, you will no longer have access to this person who will follow your orders. I don't know how based in truth that is, but it's just the thought I had. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, too, like, not just with Prescott, but uh, most with Prescott here, the uncomfortable, like, feeling that the, the especially, like, Sawyer, like, anytime Anna does something, he's always like, uh, but is this what Christian wants? And it's, like, really putting them in an uncomfortable position because it's not like they have equal control or, like, you know, equal say, it's they have to defer to Christian and what's going to happen to us if we don't listen to Christian. And Anna's not concerned with that because she's in a position where she's not going to suffer the consequences of life. Let's put that it this way. They um, are going to suffer. His employees are kind of like more I'm still I'm I just wanna let everybody know I'm stealing again from uh black women's literature. <laughs> but I'm trying to credit them. I don't remember the name of this person, but she wrote a really apt metaphor, which is like it was like, black women are sort of the mules of the household, but the white woman is like the dog of the household. So Anastasia's like the dog. Like, everybody will be nice to her. Maybe she can sleep on the bed sometimes. But everybody else, I mean, that's work animal's not going to come in your bed and sleep in your house. And if it does anything like that, you're going to kill it or get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other thing that's worth talking about uh, is the sub club, which yeah, uh, that Layla was fucked up. and Susie say they refer to themselves as, excuse me, all of Christian's past uh, subs. 
Can we read? Can I read you some very short excerpts about that? Sure. Okay. Christian comes in the room and finds Layla. He immediately fires Prescott. Christian stands opposite Layla, and placing both hands on the wooden surface of Anastasia's desk, he leans forward. What the fuck are you doing here? He growls at her. Christian! Anastasia gasps, but she's ignored. Well, I wanted to see you, and you wouldn't let me, she whispers. So you came to harass my wife? Layla, if you come anywhere near my wife again, I will cut off all support. Doctors, art school, medical insurance, all of it gone. Do you understand? Um, Christian silences Anastasia with a chilling look. Anastasia wonders, why is he being so unreasonable? And her compassion for this sad woman blooms. What's Susanna doing in reception? She came with me. Layla just wants to say thank you, says Anastasia. That's all. He ignored me, con concentrating his wrath on Layla. Did you stay with Susie when you were sick? Yes. Did she know what you were doing when you were staying with her? No, she was on vacation. Why do you need to see me? You should know that you need to ask Flynn if he wants something. Layla runs her finger along the edge of the tailor. Table, the tailor. Stop bullying her, Christian, thinks Anastasia. I had to know. Had to know what? That you're okay. He gapes at her. That I'm okay? Yes. I'm fine. There, question answered. Now, Taylor will run you to SeaTac, so you can go back to the East Coast. And if you take one step west of the Mississippi, it's all gone. Understand? Holy fuck, what the fuck is eating him? He cannot confine her to one side of the country, thinks Anastasia, but in fact, he can. It might not be convenient for Layla to go back now. She has plans. Anastasia, this does not concern you. <laughs> Layla came to see me, not you. Uh, I had my instructions. I disobeyed them, she says to Anastasia. This is the Christian Grey I know, she says, her tone sad and wistful. Christian frowns at her while the breath of ever, 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 I can't breathe. Was Christian like this with her all the time? Was he like this with me at first? I find it hard to remember. Um, so he capitulates and lets her go to the airport tomorrow, like when she said she would. So, like, one of the big things to uh, pay attention to here is not only how, you know, abusive Christian is being towards them <clears throat> when they're not even his subs anymore, just because he knows he can control them, mm. but too, like, how much... They are playing this trope of like, oh, Christian, we still love you so much. Yeah, and she's, and she's like, she's wistful for how he, how she knew him. And it's like she, she likes this super angry dude trying yeah. to keep her out of the entire west side of the country. Yeah, yeah like, and they're both still totally smitten. Uh, yeah. Well, what creeps me out most of all is that he's still involved with her. Yeah. And like, lied about it, like. He's paying for her art school, her insurance, her well, medical I mean, care? Like, how is that not a big power imbalance relationship? Involves, Don't you just have your wife like, right now? I mean, it's, I mean, you know, you can have all that stuff set up for auto pay and never talk to them. I mean, that's true, I but, like, still, he's just I mean, you keep, have to... He's trying to keep tabs on her now. Yeah, like, he's yeah to... but he is really overreaching. Oh, no, but I, I think he's doing it, like, intentionally. Like, he, no, he wants he to is. know exactly where she is, what she's doing, which is why it's such a surprise that she's here and she's, like, getting in... Anna's business. Okay, but imagine this. Let's say, let's take my ex-boyfriend. I broke up with him. We, we're done. We're over. But he is still, like, he buys me a car. He pays for my doctors. He I thought you were saying this was happening. No, it's not. But wouldn't it be <laughs> okay. fucked up if it yeah. was? I think it's totally fucked up if that's what he's doing. Right, it's wrong. It's not okay. Like, what if I want a new relationship? Would he pay for all that stuff? So, I don't know. Well, like, okay. <laughs> it feels like it's still like Dommy and Subby, and like that's not cool. They're out of that relationship. If you, <laughs> this, is, this is stupid, but okay. like, say, say your ex boyfriend buys you lunch. That's fine. Lunch okay, is say fine. Your, say your ex boyfriend is a fucking billionaire. I don't want him to give me stuff. We're over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. how how do you like establish your independence if he's paying your his your way through school and everything like that? Yeah, you're right. Yep. I've got to stop playing devil's advocate. I sound like no, it's a okay. fucking crazy. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's good, but like, it's it's an easier way to like, you know, think about all. Right. Of it. Well, we have to provide the sort of like other side of it because otherwise we can't just say like, hey, this is what's wrong. Like, yeah. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, uh, we should remind. I think we, we, we need actually, to remind people okay. of like the cliffhanger. Let me this time. remind we didn't you. Say it, I don't think. Oh, let okay. me remind you, or say for the first time, what the cliffhanger was, which was. Can you please scroll up, Chad? Um. <laughs> I can't read. Okay, so after some emails... But we know what happens. Yeah, we know what happens, but... So anyway, I want to read my notes, though. Stop! Stop! Jose Senior calls. Ray has been in a car accident. Oh, are you no, reading I've my read notes read for me now? <laughs> well, no. we, we're supposed to switch off. No, it's okay. Just well, we were, say. but we didn't... No, you can do it. But nobody said... Let me read it. Well... Sorry. Go ahead and read it. Chapter 17. No, we, I scrolled up for you. 
No. Okay. <laughs> you read it already. With Jose's dad and Jose after fishing, there was a car crash. Anastasia leaves work to go see her daddy. Except daddy. He's in the ER slash OR and can't see him. Uh, the Rodriguez is and her wait. Uh, Jose was actually also in this car crash, by the way. I wasn't clear on that. He's fine, uh, he's fine though. He had some bruised ribs and snaps at his dad. Then Christian arrives. Ray's injuries are very bad. They had to induce coma because of brain swelling. And he had cardiac arrest during surgery due to blood loss. Uh, later, Anastasia talks to unconscious Ray. Christian and Anastasia stay at a hotel. There's more visiting Ray. There's no fucking in the hotel room, though. Um, yeah. So, Sounds ahead. about right. 18. Chapter 18. Ray is still in a coma, but his brain swelling is going down. He's getting better. It's Anastasia's birthday! Hooray! Oh, Christian yeah. gives her a charm bracelet themed with all the shit they have done since they have met, and there are funny references. There's that vanilla ice cream cone on it. Possibly in reference to the ice cream that he put in her vagina? No. Possibly in reference to the fact that she's vanilla? Yeah. Also, he gets her an Audi R8, which she's okay with. It's it's his car that she was driving fast during the chase. It's white. It's yeah. white. How could mom forget my birthday, wonders Anastasia. She tried to call her mom and it didn't work. Christian has some random deal, business deal with the Taiwanese. We don't know. We don't care. It never comes up. Christian has also brought Anna's mom as a surprise at dinner. That sounds weird. <laughs> Waterworks. The ultimate meal. Anastasia. Waterworks. And then everybody shows up and they're all clapping and everyone was cheering. Chocolate cake. Uh, friend zoning Jose harder to his fucking dad of all people. But then again, the dad was weird. Does anyone care to read that on page 388? I think Chad should read it. Chad. Okay. Read what um, was said by the dad. Yeah, let's see where does it start. You know, Anna, there was a time. Well, I thought you and Jose. His voice fades and he looks at me, his dark gaze intense but loving. Oh no. I'm very fond of your son, Mr. Rodriguez, but he's like a brother to me. You would have made one fine daughter in law, and you do, to the graves. <laughs> he smiles wistfully and I brush blush. I hope you'll settle for a friend. <laughs> of course. Your husband is a fine man. You chose well, Anna. I okay. think so, I whisper. I love him so. Oh, God, this is enough. <laughs> she friend zones the dad. <laughs> like, by, like by proxy, friend zoning Jose. It's amazing. There's no such thing as a friend zone. There's way. not, by the way. <laughs> I mean, or there is, but people should shut the fuck up about yeah. it. This is the only time that Jose shows up in the whole book. No, it's not. The coma stop? It's a, there's mm, the wedding. He's at the wedding. He's at the wedding. That's a flashback. That's a flashback. Okay, well it's in Vox. <laughs> Isn't he just like mopey? He's just like looking He's like, Oh him. good job, Anna, you look beautiful on your big day. <laughs> oh, no scrolling, I'm not fucking done. <laughs> Sorry. Get your hands off that mouse. <laughs> no. Chapter Ma 18. Chapter, no, chapter no, 19. No, no we're still Oh, sorry. So friend zoning. Mom goes home. Ray wakes up. Ray. Uh, Christian and Anastasia. Not I put they, and it looks like Ray and Anastasia. <laughs> Christian and Anastasia fuck on Anna's birthday, but it's a cutaway. That was my note. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Again, hugging shit. all the notes. Well, they fuck on Anna's birthday, but it's a cutaway scene, and I feel like maybe they don't want to have like this erotically described scene while her dad's in a coma. Yeah, like in the hospital. <laughs> it's a good choice, I guess. But they couldn't. They could not do birthday sex, so yeah. I feel like. They, I feel like... Missed an opportunity? Yeah, to yeah. describe something super special, but maybe she just was out of ideas. I guess so. Oh, that would have been a great sex scene if it was, like, something super special, but Anna's, like, the whole time I couldn't stop thinking of Ray. And just, like, there's... Like, <laughs> but he's awoken. Anna, like... No, oh, he's no, not. No, he's not awake yet. Oh, when this they fuck, before. he's not awake. Yeah, yeah. No, right. No. Um, so, like, you just get Christian, like, oh, uh, he, like, he brushes his hands, like, erotically <laughs> against my sex, and all I can picture are Ray's tubes. <laughs> That's really sad. Um, I'm going to move on from that. And I'm going to burp. Uh, chapter 19. As I have just summarized, Ray has awoken. Christian and Anastasia fuck back at the hotel to commemorate that. This one is fully described. Now that, that one is tragedy fully described. is over. Uh, later, Ray complains. Later, later, a detective, um, the same one, it's Detective Clark from the shenanigans of the Virginia up the box tells Anastasia that Jack Hyde accused her of sexual harassment and lewd advances, but Anastasia sets him straight and tells her what happened in the first or second book. After another visit with Ray, who's grumpy, 
Anastasia's fucking OBGYN finds her just by chance and tells her she's six weeks, or no, four weeks late for birth control shot. And she needs to take a pregnancy test. Surprise! She's pregnant. Um, I looked this up because I thought she was six weeks late. She's four weeks late. And she, they say to get it every 12 weeks. However, I have some quaffles with this. <laughs> so Wait, you, you, so you better ready your bludgers. How do you know exactly how late she is? Because she says it's been 16 weeks since her shot. So she's... Four weeks late. Oh, what's the issue where it's unclear? Okay. Well, the unclear thing is the... Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. We'll talk oh, about it's, that Oh, it's in chapter later, 20, yeah. actually, yeah. But anyways, also, my first thought was, isn't fertility pretty hard to get back if you just abruptly stop taking the shot? But then again, your mileage may vary. Not everybody's the same. But I heard that's a common problem. Yeah. There's a play described sex scene as tragedies ever, and I was wrong. This is the scene where Christian makes Anna masturbate. That's all. Okay. Chapter 20. 20. That's right. A fucking baby is what's gonna fix this relationship and make Christian a mature man, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's a transvaginal ultrasound. Blah. Um, according... <laughs> the only reason I say blah is that in my old home state, Virginia, there was some legislation passed that required you to have a transvaginal ultrasound if Before you, you wanted to have abortion. an abortion, which is traumatic. Yep. According to the doctor, the shot ran out early given the time that A's pregnancy has been extant. So it doesn't even matter that she missed the shot because it ran out early. Anastasia goes to work and asks her secretary uh, whether the secretary kept canceling her appointments. And in fact, she did because Anna kept asking her to. She gets really mad at Hannah for doing this. even, be, be, but even it's though, her fault. Yeah, she didn't she, look at her fucking schedule. She's a cycle of abuse thing again. She, no, she gets mad at Hannah, but then she yeah, internally she kind of she says, says, like, oh, that's my like, She gets frustrated and she's like, it's my fault. Um, Very good. So, I, I just imagine Anna was just always like, cancel all my appointments. Cause she I mean, but she idea. was. It's in the book. She but keeps I, saying, cancel all my appointments. I just, I, I imagine she's doing because she likes it, like yeah. in a movie. Yeah. Like, cancel all my appointments, I mean, Anna. I'm going out. It's not necessary to do that. No, like, it's not. She could have just sat down and had a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Anastasia... What are my appointments? Cancel these ones except for the one about my birth control. <laughs> Anastasia breaks the news of her pregnancy to Christian back at home at, during dinner. Um, I would like to reenact this scene with Charity yelling at one of us and one of us narrating. This is the best evidence yet that Christian is an awful piece of shit person, and I don't know what page it's on. It's... Okay. So who wants to... I think Charity should be Christian. Who, who can be the saddest? I can be pretty sad. Okay. I think you should be pregnant, mm. Anastasia, and I will narrate. Okay. I'm pregnant. <laughs> he stills and very slowly all the color drains from his face. What? He whispers Ashen. I'm pregnant. His brow furrows with incomprehension. How? 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 What sort of ridiculous question is that? It's obviously fucking. I blush and give him a quizzical how do you think look. His stance changes immediately, his eyes hardening to flint. You're shot? He snarls. Oh shit. Did you forget your shot? I just gaze at him, unable to speak. Fuck, he's mad, really mad. Christ, Anna! He bangs his fists on the table, making me jump, and stands so abruptly he knocks the dining chair over. You had one thing, one thing to remember. Shit, I don't fucking believe it. How could you be so stupid? Stupid! I gasp. Shit. I want to tell him that the shot was ineffective, but words fail me. I gaze down at my fingers. I'm sorry. I whisper. Sorry! Fuck! He says again. You know the timing's not very good. Not very good? He shouts. We've known each other for five fucking minutes. I wanted to show you the fucking world and now fuck. Diapers and vomit and shit. He closes his eyes. I think he's trying to contain his temper and losing the battle. Did you forget? Tell me. Or did you do this on purpose? His eyes blaze and anger emanates off him like a force field. No. I whisper. I can't tell him about Hannah. He'd fire her. I thought we'd agreed on this. He shouts. You know, we had. I'm sorry. He ignores me. This is why. This is why I like control. So shit like this doesn't come along and fuck everything up. No, little blip. Christian, please don't shout at me. Tears start to slip down my face. Don't start with the waterworks now. He snaps. Fuck. He runs a hand through his hair, pulling at it as he does. You think I'm ready to be a father? His voice catches in a mix and it's a mixture of rage and panic. And it all becomes clear. The fear and the loathing rip large in his eyes. His rage is that of a powerless adolescent. Oh, 50, I'm so sorry. It's a shock for me, too. I know neither one of us is ready for this, but I think you'll make a wonderful father. We'll figure it out. How the fuck do you know? He shouts, louder this time. Tell me how! His eyes burn as so many emotions cross his face. It's fear that's most prominent. Oh, fuck this. Christian bells dismissively and holds his hands up in a gesture of defeat. He turns on his heel 
and stalks towards the foyer, grabbing his jacket as he leaves the great room. His footsteps echo out the wooden floor, and he disappears through the double doors of the foyer, slamming the door behind him and making me jump once more, and I'm alone. So, that's Ooh. fucked up. <laughs> So Anastasia stays home after he leaves. Mrs. Jones tries to comfort her. Christian returns, dirty, stinking drunk, and says a bunch of sappy bullshit. Too, mad, too bad that he couldn't manage that while he was sober. Anna sees his phone by mistake when she's putting him to bed, and there's a fucking text from <laughs> Elena Lincoln, implying both that they hung out tonight and that they patched up their relationship and made up. Anastasia's pretty fucking mad, to say the least. He's mad. He's mad. Okay, well, I'm gonna move on. Uh, chapter 21. Anastasia realizes, and I quote, that she married this man too quickly. <laughs> Anastasia stoops, snoops in his shit even more and finds out through his emails that Jack Hyde had tons of information on everyone related to Christian Girl. Like, Related to Christian Grey, including Anastasia herself. She forwards the text from Elena that she forwarded from Christian's phone to Christian and lets him know that he's in deep shit. Then she locks herself in the red room of play. In the morning, Christian has mobilized everyone and everyone is freaking the fuck out because they can't find Anastasia. Good thing Anastasia woke up in time for work without an alarm in a windowless room. They have a standoff where Anastasia ignores Christian's usual bullshit and doesn't let him touch her or use sex against her to make her stop. This is the only part of the book I like to read. It's on pages 431 through 438, which we do not have to read. It's long. Wait, what is it? It's her saying, like, fuck you, Christian, you're wrong. Oh, okay. Anastasia talks to her fetus. Anastasia oh, goes right. to work. We should mention that okay. we call the child blip. She calls yeah. the child blip. She calls it blip because it's a, it's a little it's blip. It's a little blip. Ultrasound. ultrasound. Which she has in, with her. And I fucking no, hate it. little blip. Whoa. She says it all the time. Every time she blip. refers to little blip. Oh, it's oh. not just me anymore. It's, it's me. me, little blip. Oh, God, I hate it. Oh, no. I hate babies in general. But... Can you do that voice again instead of very Mickey Mouse? Hello, it's me, little blip. <laughs> <laughs> just say some, like, Anastasia type lines about like, worrying about the baby. Can we find one? Hold on. No, little blip. <laughs> Christian, please don't shout at me. Tears start to slip down my face. Okay. Yes, that's your daddy, little blip. Hopefully he'll cool off and come back soon. <laughs> yes, okay. he loves me, yes, and he'll love you too, little blip. That's enough. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, God, I hate it. <laughs> the worst. Ugh. Um, Go ahead. Okay, where were we? Anna goes to work. Anna talks to her fetus. Anna goes to work. Anna visits Ray, who reassures her that it will work out, but all he knows is that they had a fight now that she's pregnant. Christian and Anastasia don't hang out, but he does watch her sleep. He's avoiding her like fucking crazy. I wonder why. Uh, Anastasia goes to work. Christian tells her he's going on a business trip and she barfs. Uh, she gets a call from who she thinks is Mia Gray, but actually it's Jack Hyde. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, oh, no. I want to say something here. I thought that was so stupid. Like, hey, hey I'm, I'm here. Just, yeah, just like having Jack Hyde call. Like, it's it's fine it's that me. like he calls on Mia's cell phone, but I just like that Jack Hyde's back. Uh -huh. Like, with no, there's no preamble. Like, it's just a surprise. He just wants yeah. revenge. It, it's totally fine, like, to have a surprising twist like that, but Jack Hyde has not been mentioned for chapters and chapters yeah. and chapters. <laughs> he was mentioned in the last chapter of the emails. Yeah. They're he's, still he's... trying to build this. But it's, I guess Chad feels that it wasn't very well done. Yeah, yeah, I feel like, not necessarily in the book, but if they do the third movie, I hope that when they make the third movie, rather than focusing on their relationship, the relationship forms more of a subplot, especially the baby stuff. As, so it's, like part of the tension of the fact that Jack Hyde is lurking at all times. Right. And they make Jack Hyde an actual, into an actual villain antagonist who's, like, present throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. And so it's more about Anna and Christian against Jack Hyde as opposed to mm -hmm. Anna and Christian having a and against each other repeatedly. Life. Yeah. yeah. Um, Even though this is all really important to their personal relationship stuff, yeah. it would make a, make a more interesting movie if it was about Jack Hyde yes. as the villain, or at least that's the main antagonist mm -hmm. in conflict. Uh, this chapter has a pretty <sighs> egregious uh, error. It does? Yep. She says, I glance at the radio alarm. 8.30. Shit, I don't want to be late for work. I will don't want to. <laughs> I will don't want to be late for work. Um, <laughs> pretty surprised I didn't catch that. Yeah, me too. I'm not. <laughs> um, Remember some of the errors we found in the other books? Yeah, but oh, this yeah, is the third this is... book. Yeah. I mean, they published them all at once. Yeah, I assume so. this is the same editor. I didn't know that. The same tired editor who was like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> no, I read the books the same way we, we did I mean, when we had to come yeah. back to Probably it. what happened was like the editor tried to do some stuff and then E.L. James kept sending it back on like, no, no, no. And the editor was finally like, fuck! <laughs> and just like let it go. All of it. Um, chapter 22. Uh, Jack Hyde says, give me a lot of money. 
Or else this girl and me have become injured. <laughs> a lot of money. Five million dollars to be precise. Anastasia goes home, changes, loses Sawyer, who was driving her before. Like, he, she tricks him and gets away from him. Escape, escapes Escala, goes to the bank, of which there's no name given. And some slimy, okay, some wonderful woman judges at her before she, Anastasia realizes she's totally the wife of Christian Grey and she has a black credit card. Uh, Anastasia also reveals through this interaction that she doesn't really have a concept of how banks work. You can't just walk in and say, give me five million dollars <laughs> and actually get it in cash. This was actually retconned at the end of one version of the books and it included a phone conversation about how it ha actually happened. It was like two lines or something. Um, Christian asks asks the bank man on the phone, because the bank man called Christian on the phone about this, as he would, um, so Christian asks to speak with Anastasia on the phone. You cowardly bank man, screams Anastasia <laughs> mentally. Now Anastasia has to pretend she's leaving Christian, only he fucking deserves it. And it was, like, very vindicating to read this, because he's, like, sobbing, and he's like, was it always about the money? <laughs> what about the baby? Oh, by the way, that wounds Anna pretty hard, when he's like, was it always about the money? Yeah. 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 But that's how it seems. Anyway. But he did so much fucking shit to her, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, anyway. I, I mean, I can understand. I think it's really dumb that Anna's like, how could you say it like, later on when, when she's like, yeah, well, I mean, wounded. externally, that's what it yeah, seems like. She's going to the bank to withdraw $5 million after they had a huge fight without saying anything, escaping yeah. Sawyer. It seems like she's leaving him and taking right. money. Why don't, we like, just, why don't we just look at it? A little blip. A little blip. Oh, okay, <laughs> let me find it. Mrs. Gray, your husband wants to speak with you. He's on line one. I'll just be outside. Benedict Arnold has nothing on Wayland. He was the manager of the bank. He was the manager of the bank. The awful bank man. Hi. You're leaving me? No! Yes. He gasps, almost a sob. And I. Christian, please don't. You're going? He says, yes. But why the cash? Was it always the money? His tortured voice is barely audible. No. Tears roll down my face. No. It was five million enough. Yes. And the baby? I'll take care of the baby. This is what you want? Yes. He inhales sharply. Take it all! He hisses. Christian, I saw what's for you. It's for your family. Please don't. Take it all, Anastasia. Christian. And an early cape. I'll always love you. He hangs up. Christian, no. I love you too. Anyway. I have an author's note from the PD from right. the PDF version that was not in the print Oh, version. that's why I saw it, because I relied on PDFs. Author's note. I am aware that today you cannot walk into an American bank and withdraw $5 million. The conversation Anna did, did not hear went like this. Troy Whalen. It's Christian Gray. I've spoken with my wife. Give her the money. Miss, she, whatever she wants. Mr. Gray, I can't. Liquidate five million of my assets. Off the top of my head, George's PKC, Atlantis Corp, Ferris, and Umatic. A million from each. Mr. Gray, this is highly irregular. I'll have to consult with Mr. Forline. I'm playing golf with him next week, I guess. Just fucking do it, Waylon. <laughs> Find a way, or I'll close all the accounts and move GH business elsewhere. Oh Understand? my god. <laughs> He's silent on the end. We'll sort out the fucking paperwork later, I add. More conciliatory. Yes, Mr. Gray. Holy shit. Um, Why couldn't she just write Jack a check? Does he not have any money in savings? Yes. Yeah, well, well, Jack demanded cash. Oh, and, um, yeah. Well, he's done. Can you dumb. get your savings in cash? You usually can't get $5 million not in Not on the bills. spot. Like, they have to pull money. That's why there's the line in there about this being a cash reserve. Because, mm. like, they have to have all the bills. Yeah. yeah. And banks don't, don't yeah. do that anymore. Okay. Um, okay. And another thing is that, like, I don't know why E.L. James decided to write Anna like this, where she's like, surely it won't be hard to get $5 million in cash from the bank. And she's like, I'll just go and do it. She's got to do it somehow. She's got to try. Yeah, but why does she think it's not going to be hard? Because she sits there right. and she's like, oh, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Like, when come Waylon's on. Like, yeah. Waylon's like, you know, we usually don't do this, give you know, $5 million to people. Not only we don't do this, but, like, this isn't really done. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um... You cowardly bank man scrolling the mouse before I can read. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, now Anastasia has to pretend he's... Okay. Anyway, as the transaction goes through, Christian calls her cell phone oh, repeatedly. Oh, we should mention why Anna, think Anna pretends she's in Christian. 
So Jack Hyde also said that... She can't tell anyone that yeah, this is happening. And she thinks that Christian will overreact and do something that will compromise Mia's safety. Well, no, Anastasia's worried about compromising her safety because she doesn't know. Jack could maybe find out that she told. Right. Well, um, she, she's worried that Jack could find out, but also that if Christian finds out, that Christian will do something that will make Jack act. Yeah. And That's the main him. thing. Because she okay. does want to tell Christian, but... Right. So, like, there's a reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the transaction goes through. As it goes through, Christian calls her cell phone repeatedly. Anna figures it's to track it, but he should know she's at the fucking cash reserve. No, I think he was just trying to get in contact with her. No, I don't think so, because then he calls Sawyer. We transition, and then she also throws her phone in a garbage can because she thinks he's going to try. No, Elizabeth throws oh, her phone My in bad. Garbage I can. didn't. I fucking forgot. Uh, we transition to Anna getting the heck out of the cash reserve, and it turns out that Jack has Elizabeth as an accomplice, and she's one of Anastasia's co workers. She's like the secretary or something. Uh, Anastasia. So they go for a car ride. Sorry, the receptionist. They go for a car ride. Anastasia uh, with Elizabeth. They take her to some location. Anna passes off the money to Jack, who then beats the shit out of Anastasia. And you may be thinking to yourself, "Well, Anna, this wouldn't have happened if you had a gun." <laughs> and well, guess fucking what? She does have a gun because she took <laughs> Layla's gun that Christian had in his desk, and she shoots Jack Hyde in the ham, the hot, the thigh ham, the ham hock, the ham hock. Yeah. There's a note here that maybe Chad added. Yeah, um, so this is another example. Uh, when Anna slips away from Sawyer at uh, <clears throat> their apartment, uh, she makes a she makes a mental comment as she's taking a car from the garage that uh, Sawyer is probably going to lose his job. Sawyer does not lose his job. Sawyer does not lose his job. Uh, despite the fact that Anastasia got away from him, went to the bank to withdraw $5 million, and then <clears throat> met up with Jack Hyde and got the shit beaten out of her under Sawyer's watch. Yeah. Prescott got fired for letting Layla get through. I wonder why he <laughs> didn't get fired. I was just going to say there's like really doesn't seem to be a reason why he, yeah. should, why he shouldn't have Sounds got fired. Sounds like she should file a discrimination suit. <laughs> um, what do you guys think about this as far as a climax to this book? Um, to this whole whatever. saga? Whatever. Yeah. I mean, it would have been better if there had been more actual conflict with yeah, Jack Hyde. Once again, this conflict is introduced and resolved within a chapter. A chapter. <laughs> oh, and you know what we also didn't comment on? Uh, Anna and Kate's conversation about Elliot and Christian and their no guns thing. Because that oh, comes yeah. up in like chapter 7 or 8. Oh, you know, I don't like guns. We had talked about it before, but I think on maybe it the got last deleted. Yes. Yeah. So Christian and Elliot are completely like don't understand the concept of a gun, whereas Anastasia is like, I shoot guns all the time. My dad's ex-military. Yeah, yeah. They, they, like, they're like they so confused by yeah. the fact that Christian doesn't like a gun. He's like, what's wrong with you? And I, yeah. I was wondering if that was like E.L. James... That's like she thinks that's what all Americans are like. Yeah, I think her. I think and, like we the did. Christians. Uh, yeah. Christians, uh, uh, yeah. Our thought was it was the English sensibility that was making her write Christian and Elliot like, oh, we would never touch a gun. That's fucking crazy. And well, then Anastasia and Kate are like, oh yeah. No, I think, and it comes out later, and I realize this now. I think it's because they wrote Christian Stanley to be super liberal, and like, because like Grace and oh, right, Carrick, like vaccine. Yeah, like they're so yeah. they're anti gun and, and um, anti vaxxers anti guns. And um, sorry, not anti vaxxers No, they're they're pro vaxxing anti guns. And like. Christian's, like, very philanthropic, like, he wants to feed the third world and everything like that. So I think it's tied into, like, this, like, super liberal sensibility of them, you know, being, like, every, like, liberal cause is is what they have. But see, Anna, a gun saves the day. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Anna, see, Christian, yeah, see a Christian, a gun saves the day. But there's a funny conversation between Anna and, and uh, Christian where they're looking at Layla's gun, and and Christian's like, you saw the gun? I hope you put the safety back on. And I was like, that's a revolver. It's a revolver. It doesn't have a safety. <laughs> yeah. And, um... <laughs> Christian's like, oh, well, uh. <laughs> and then, like, they have a, uh, Kate and Anna talk about it, where they're like, does, does Elliot have a gun? And Kate's like, no, isn't that weird? Yeah. And they're just like, ah, oh, it's so weird. Why don't they like guns? <laughs> Which is why it's, the dynamic is weird. If it was just, like, Anna being like, I don't understand why Christian doesn't like guns, that'd be one thing. Yeah. But yeah. Kate and them both, they're just both like, guns? Who doesn't have a gun? I love guns. <laughs> I use guns to kill and eat food. In Hands Little Conflict. Chapter 23. Chapter 23. Now it's Anastasia who's in the coma, and it's that narrative style where the coma allows for partial awareness of external situations. In other words, cheating. Oh, right. So at the end of the last chapter, um, 
as Anna is passing out, Here you, go. you hear tires and like people running yeah. up and Darkness pushing. consuming her, consuming me <laughs> from far away. All hell breaks loose. Cars screeching, brakes doors shouting, running footsteps. The gun drops from my hand. Anna! Christian's voice, Christian's voice, Christian's agonized voice. Mia, save Mia. Anna! Darkness, peace. There's only pain, my head, my chest, burning pain. My side, my arm, pain, pain, pain and hushed words in the gloom. So pain. Anastasia basically <laughs> sort of becomes that Metallica song, except yeah. that she can hear Darkness! It. <laughs> I can't remember the rest of the song, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, look it up. <laughs> uh, it's one. How did they find Anna when she threw her cell phone away? Uh, she oh, actually threw it's... away Waylon's cell phone. And yeah, she still had her cell phone. His cell phone. She put one of her cell phones in the duffel bags of cash. Oh, fancy it's smart girl. Her, Who's yeah. Waylon? The bank manager. Bank. What no man? idea she how. Has a cell phone. Evil bank man. I don't know how. That's that a happens. plot hole. She doesn't ever. It's Let's not see explained if we can how she got find it. Find serious? Yeah, she says that she took Waylon's cell phone and threw that away. Um, Maybe I mean I guess she was in his office and did it, but it's not said in the book that she does that until. Yeah, you would think she would say that. No, yeah, she just says that like she threw away the bank manager's cell phone and put her cell phone in one of the duffel bags. No, she, she say that. No, no, no. Elizabeth threw away the bank manager's cell phone. Oh, right. She gave Elizabeth the right. bank manager's cell just phone. Just to be clear, just to be clear. Yeah. Right. Wouldn't right. she Either way, explain she... that? Does she explain that in the chapter when she's doing it? Or no, uh -huh. in, like after she's woken up. Okay, I don't that know must how Sawyer found me. A thing where. E.L. James didn't think about it yeah. <laughs> until later. Yeah. I don't know how Sawyer found me. Was he tracking my cell too? The Saab is fitted with a tracking device. All our cars are. By the time we got near the bank, you were already on the move. And we followed. Why are you smiling? On some level, I knew you'd be stalking me. Jack had instructed me to get rid of my cell, so I borrowed Waylon's cell, and that's the one I threw away. I put mine into one of the duffel bags so you track your money. Oh, my God. Whoa! Okay, well, <coughs> let's get on with the summary. Um... Christian and company immediately found her and took her to the hospital. Christian appears appears to care, appears to peer for the well-being of their fetus, Blip. He admits to his mother and, and coma Anna that the baby's presence made him understand that what he had done with Elena was actually wrong, and that comes up later too. Anna wakes up from the coma, and Christian acts like a big, pompous ass to all the nearby healthcare workers. He tells her Jack Hyde had somehow gotten a bail agreement, fulfill, uh, uh paid... Whatever. Yeah, his, his he got bail. bail. He made bail. Bail's posted. And that's why he was out being a terror. Chapter ends with them agreeing to call their fetus Blip and saying that they will do their best to be good parents. Uh, in one of Anna's <laughs> um, brief uh, consciousness bits, yeah. bits of consciousness, she overhears Ray and Christian talking. Ray says, If you don't take her across your knee, I sure as hell will. What the hell was she thinking? Trust me, Ray. I just might do that. Which is weird. Guess to... what, Ray? I spank your daughter. Yeah, it's... In, not in jest. Like, not only is it, um... Well, it's her stepdad, so it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of... It's treating her like a... I mean, I understand that they're mad. Um, and that, you know, physical punishment is a thing that men... Dad, like, the, Dads thrive on physical punishment. Yeah. But, no, they don't. And, and um... <laughs> and, like, it's it's... Treating her like a child for something yeah. that could, like, that's not going to fucking fix anything, spanking her. Yeah. And she just, did the right thing in the situation anger. anyways. Well, no, she didn't. But, like, she she did what she could. You can't fucking criticize her when somebody's life was in the balance here. Yeah. Well, they're, jo they're supposed to be joking about the martial punishment, but it's just not good. Like, I, I have a note on, uh, because I noticed that throughout this book, like, the thing that's been happening through the other two books where... Do you mean corporal, corporal punishment, not martial punishment? Sorry, yeah, corporal punishment. Marital um, punishment. No, martial. I said martial. Martial law. M-A-R-S-A-H-A-L-L. -L. Yeah. I meant, I martial meant, uh, punishment. Yeah. Um, but, um... I didn't know he was in the army. Corporal punishment. In this book, it felt more obvious because they were supposed to be married, I guess. Even though they were never really on even footing. But, um... The way that both Anna and Christian are constantly treating each other like children and like infantilizing each other and their motivations is really disturbing. Like, there's a lot of a lot of Anna's criticism. I think is probably pretty accurate, but the way that she thinks about it is really condescending. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. like saying that you know Christian is an adolescent that hasn't grown out of his like 
adolescent. And he's like really does act like a moody adolescent a lot of the time. But she's like really she's really bad about how she like thinks about it. And Christian just literally treats Anna like a child. Yeah. And this continues here, and then you see like it happening with other characters like Ray, who is a father figure and, you know, conceivably would have more right or like more reason to do that, but it's still bad. Yeah. yeah. They're also very paternal about how they do it, both of them. Like Anna's always like, Oh, I'm the mother figure that's gonna fix adolescent Christian and Christian like I'm the father figure of control that's yeah. gonna like keep you in line. I wanna comment really quick. I think this is a common problem in common dysfunctional relationships. Sorry if that's not clear. What I mean to say is like I think now in this time when we have dysfunctional relationships, they often look like that. The other person, whether they're forced to or whether it's like a result of some fucked up cultural idea, are going to treat the other like a child. Like, for instance, like, hypothetical relationship totally didn't happen. Let's say, like, I'm dating some guy who's, like, a little bit immature. It happens. But I'm like, oh, like, he doesn't, like, groom himself. Like, I gotta cut his toenails and make sure that he's ready to go out and he looks good and dressed for his job interview. Like, these are all things that an adult should be doing themselves, right? But on the on the flip side, he looks at me and he thinks, like, oh, like, you know, she's so weak and emotional and, like, and I infantilize her for sexual reasons. I mean, like, I feel like that happens a lot. A lot of people's relationships look like this because of the dynamics in our society. Just wanted to comment on this. I don't have anything else really to say. Yeah. Chapter 24. Anna's in the hospital some more. Uh, Christian grumps at her to eat like he did last chapter. I didn't every mention it. chapter. He does it every chapter. It's fucking annoying. But I'll just mention it now because this is like the second to last chapter. Oh, and it's sort of important. Like, she finally realizes why. Well, she she's yeah. eating for two. Well, no. She realizes that he oh, wants he's... her to eat because he was hungry once as a baby. Yeah, once. No, but, but no, probably more than once actually. Yeah. But like the one time that was traumatizing. Well, he was starving for four days, neglected, and continually. I think he was probably uh, not fed on multiple occasions, including the four days. Okay, go yes. ahead. Christian literally takes Anastasia's doctor side after he says she can be discharged from the hospital to ask if he can fuck her while she's injured and pregnant, and he gets the green light. But he isn't. But it's notable that he does not fuck her. In. Because she has a rib injury. Anastasia has a shower cry because on the way home, in the car, somebody called Christian on the phone about Jack. Uh, they ha- they bond in the shower. Turns out that Jack Hyde, later they discover when they're out of the shower, is like a dark Christian slash Dove Charney who had all these porno films and pictures of himself roughly fucking many female employees at SIP. And he was blackmailing them all so that he could continue to torment the grades. That part is not like Dove Charney. But um, the similarities are striking. Christian no- But the other similarities that are striking is that Christian notes that he is like Jack Hyde. He, too, is a sexual sadist and likes to take pictures as collateral against his subs. Anastasia gets mad that he noticed the similarity. But it's there. Uh, yeah. Christian tells Anastasia the Hyde connection. They were at the same orphanage together. <laughs> like Foster sorry, home. Foster home together and came from similar shit life experiences in Detroit. And Hyde was jealous because even though Hyde was a fucking photographic memory man who reads books he didn't get into harvard he didn't have the experience he didn't even have the option to drop out of harvard and start his multi-million dollar uh empire although um, he did go to an ivy league school he did he go just, to an ivy league school he just couldn't he just uh, didn't get adopted by the grays he didn't get adopted by the grays he had to put himself were, through an ivy league christian school. was adopted out of the family that jo- that hyde was also in for, right. by the grays so he's always held a grudge, apparently. Yeah, he's like, that. Could, I could have been Christian Grey. I could yeah. have been Christian Grey. And I just want to mention real quick now, they make this comparison with Christian, but I don't really think there's a difference between Jack Hyde and Christian Grey. Like, Well, Jack Hyde is emotional. So is Christian Grey. No, but like Jack Hyde like is impul- impulsively... Christian Grey... Like, Jack Hyde is like impulsively acting out on like his, his vengeance and stuff like that. That's Christian's the main, not? That's the main difference. Christian's not? Not the way that Jack Hyde is. Oh, I'm not are saying, you sure? Let's see I'm what not, happens I'm not later saying, in this very chapter. I'm not saying that they're not the same. I'm just saying that, like... Jack like, is made the to way look that more they, erratic. The way that they... Yeah, the way that they approach situations... Jack is supposed to be a psychotic, whereas... Christian, Christian is a is sociopath like, in that. This is not to is. malign anyone. No, like, definitely not. It's, uh, there's a lot of functional psychopaths. I'm as sure, as funny as that may sound to some people. Like, it doesn't mean that you're going to be Charles Manson. Just to talk about the sort of 
torture and dehumanization and stuff and abuse. Like I feel that they're very similar on those. And they're both well, they're both also like very like narcissistic. Actually, you know what? I take it back. It's completely possible that neither of these men has a mental illness and that they are just knowing knowingly committing abuse. I, yeah, I don't think that they're supposed to like have like even. I think they're. Jack Hyde is supposed to be like unhinged or something. Yeah. Quote unquote. But and, Christian is like a controlled version of Yeah, Christian of it is like is like controlled that's like literally the only difference. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. That's like, it. And he their has approaches more money and their he wears approaches nice suits. to problems are different. Um But they're basically the same person. Yeah. So there's really like you can't say that Christian is the good one and Jack is the bad one. They both suck. Oh, we should we should just quickly uh just Why did I drop that ref to Doug Charney. Charney? Because a bunch of shit came out on the news about... Sorry, I think it was BuzzFeed, not the news. Or Gawker. Doug Charney is the former CEO of American Apparel. And founder. Like and founder of American Apparel. Once lauded for his wonderful uh, labor standards that he had for um, both immigrant workers and just low-income workers who happened to be usually not white. And that was lauded as a success. And I certainly like to buy unitards for American Apparel and other things like that. I'm even wearing an American Apparel shirt right now. But Doug Charney is a fucking sexual harasser, and there was this and frightening and predator and creep and apparent. And he had been charged with kidnapping and locking a woman in his room to make her a sex slave. It was settled. Holy shit! Yeah. She was paid a settlement, but I think it happened. And yeah, there was a bunch of emails from a court filing that basically revealed all the like terrible awful right. emails and so, and he kept pictures he infantilized this woman and recordings apparently yes. of his sexual encounters with you staff think for members. blackmail in fact but yeah. no, um i mean nobody knows but nobody really knows but probably, it's probably just for his own he's nasty jerk off material but there's like like against their consent and stuff like that. yes so. particularly shocking was some communication from one of his employees who said it used to be a point of pride that you were a woman working for american apparel but now daddy aka dub charney has to come onto our faces five times a day for us to keep our jobs. Like, it was fucked up. Jesus. Anyway. Yeah, he made all the women refer to him as daddy, too. So it was kind of interesting that Jack Hyde was just like, stop scrolling! Oh, 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 I'm sorry. If you scroll one more time, <laughs> you'll be punished. <laughs> You're um, in charge of scrolling. Thank you. Uh, so anyway, they're at the same foster home. I was jealous. that, But we already kind of knew that Hyde was jealous. Everyone comes over to Christian's house and yells at Anastasia for being such a ding and putting herself in danger like that. Kate asks Anastasia to be her matron of honor at her shitty wedding to Weasel Elliot. Weasel Elliot. Christian asks his parents about the Jack Hyde connection stuff. Christian realizes he used to have great taste in children's 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 literature. Are you my mother? That book about the baby bird, which is why Jack was calling him baby bird and all those ransom communications that he sent to Christian that we just found out about. Yeah. Christian now reveals he will tell Anna what happened with Elena Lincoln. Okay. So this kind of solves a bunch of mysteries that we didn't know were mysteries. Yes. Yeah. Like the baby bird thing. Yep. Like, if this was from Christian's point of view, maybe it makes some fucking sense. Yeah. And maybe it will be if she writes two more books right. about, from Christian's point of view, but like... I don't know why he couldn't have just said something. Like, just a one-off where he's like, he called me baby bird. I, I think, think there might have been something like that. No, he just says, he. I don't understand the note, and that's all he ever says about it. Yeah. And it bugs Anna forever. Yeah, I don't understand this note. That's all he says. Yeah. Right. I feel like this yeah. is poor planning on her, on James's part. I think, like, she just... She came up with something at the end. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a lot of... I mean, I think that's, you know... I think this book, more than any other, is uh, indicative of the way this was written originally, chapter by chapter, not going back and editing because it's already published and out there. There are a lot of plot points that uh, are seem like they're going to be subplots, but never come back. Like um, Gail, Mrs. Johnson, and Taylor, their relationship is like just one, mentioned once, and then it doesn't come back till the epilogue. Mm -hmm. um, Christian hints that he's going to fuck over the guy who uh, hit Ray. Uh, Anna overhears that, but she never asks about it, and it never comes back. Prescott gets fired. Maybe that's just racism, though. <laughs> and it never gets mentioned again. Rehired or mentioned. And there's just, like, a lot of, like, things that I feel like, you know, she'll say, um, I'll just put this in, maybe it'll be something later, and she forgets about it, and it doesn't come back. And so it leaves us with a really weird, disjointed narrative that has all these loose ends. Yep. And, and uh... It was the stuff with Lincoln's mail money, but that doesn't come later. 
Like, yeah, uh, that's another solved mystery that <laughs> that wasn't even a mystery in the first place. Did, is that, Who would did, want Jack Hyde to Is be that in this free? chapter? Or is that that's next chapter. Okay, next. let's talk about it then. Oh, also, I want to say. Are you my mother makes me really anxious. Really? Yeah, because the fucking bird doesn't I know. know who its mother is. Where's like the that. bird's mother? <laughs> I and I know it finds it at the end, but for a while it, it didn't know who its mother was. Yeah. Uh, there's also one about a bird who doesn't know how to drink water. Oh, that's really fucked up. Yeah, and it's like trying, it's like it goes around the farmyard seeing how everybody else drinks water. And it's like, I don't know how to drink water. And it's like, oh no, that poor thirsty bird. Oh. Finally, it learns that it, uh, it has to find a faucet that's dripping out water and open its beak. Oh, well, I'm anyway. glad the bird survives. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, um, chapter, chapter 25. 25. The final chapter. The final chapter, well, but there's an epilogue. Yeah. Um, so, Elena Lincoln used physical abuse on Christian to c- control his raging teenager ways. Uh, Christian was digging a ditch or something on her property. She gave him some lemonade and he, he said some random stupid smart mouth comment and she slapped him. And then she kissed him. And then she slapped him, but he was 15 years old, so it's really weird. Uh, this long relationship informed much of his worldview and understanding of power dynamics. Uh, the time that they met most recently that Anastasia flipped her shit about, uh, Elena touched Christian's arm and tried to come on to him. And Christian was like, don't do that. That's a big boundary pushing that you just did. And, um, (laughs) (laughs) he has, like, this PTSD response to her. Like, he freezes when she touches him, which is interesting and scary. Uh, Elena- Only Anna may touch him now. Only Anna may touch him now. Can I do a quick reading of that? Yes. Do not do that. That is a big boundary pushing you just did. (laughs) Yes. And they will now never speak again because of this failed come on a thon. <laughs> Christian now understands because he now having he own baby that it wouldn't be cool if the baby got BS- BDSM owned by someone else. <laughs> Fatherhood has already changed him. Uh, that he and Anastasia go on. It turns out that Elena's husband is the one who posted bail for Hyde. Lincoln. By the way, yes, his name is Link, short for Lincoln. Elena Lincoln. Uh, Link beat Elena up really bad one time when she when he found out that she was fucking Christian for since he was a teenager. Uh, I can't condone that, even though it was fucked. It was fucked up of her to do that, but you don't do that to someone else. Oh, they're divorced too. They're divorced. Christian will now burn his company. That's to say, Christian will now um, fire Link from his company, burn it to the ground, build it back up. And sell it for a thousand dollars, which is a lot of money. No, I made that up. It's much more than that. <laughs> then Anastasia and Christian fuck during the picnic. Later, emails and fuck. Does he own the company, or does he? Is he going to buy it? And I break think it? he has majority stock. Okay. And yeah. he says he's going to. He has. So he's going to devalue he has Roz, the stock. He has Roz entirely fire the board, and then he says he's going to dismantle it piece by piece. Okay. So. Why did Link post bail? My theory is that if you'll remember at the end of the second book when Jack is talking and it's his perspective, he sees Elena Lincoln running from the house crying. I'm thinking maybe in an early draft he colludes with her and somehow also colludes with her divorced husband and they are all trying to fuck up Christian's life. Like if you look at it, she's trying to start a relationship with him again even though he's married and... It just so happens that her ex-husband is involved, and it just so happens that, like, they are all seemingly trying to fuck things up. But Elena gets off with nothing. She does get off with nothing. Yeah, I think that it's just that he found someone else that had a grudge, but it's a very tenuous connection. (laughs) Yeah, how is it? I don't know. Like, Link is is at—he's a non-entity. Yeah, Yeah, he's a complete non-entity. There's no reason for him. She just wanted to have a character to, like, She just wanted to explain... She just wanted to tie up this one loose end. And she wanted to do it with someone that we kind of knew about. Yeah. I I just... I think that it's supposed to be as tenuous as, like, they both had a grudge against Christian. But, like, like, can you see how that would have worked, though? Like, if there was, like, this master plot by Elena against Christian? It was not that good of a writer. He would be her, like, dungeon sub, and then she'd be like, I've taken your company, your wife, and Jack Hyde is my baby. If that was the case... (laughs) E.L. James would not let her get away without being punished severely. Yes, that's yeah. true. And, and that's would, why she changed it. would be changed. revealed. Like we it would be revealed, it. and she would be severely punished. That's it. Th- I think that she had like this half-baked idea, but she never got to develop it for yeah. whatever reason, and she just dropped it. But then mm. all this other kind of vestigial stuff was there still. Mm. 
I don't know why. Just but, the thought. But the thing that bothers me is why would Elena go back with her her ex-husband? Be because her. nobody would ever suspect. But they both have a similar goal. They both want to fuck up Christian. Link has the motivation to fuck up Christian because he fucked up his because he fucked his ex-wife. Elena has the motivation because she's jealous. And Jack has the motivation because he's fucking will stop at nothing. We've seen that he will stop at nothing. So when you combine these three people, it makes sense. He now has the resources to do all that stalking that he does, the money to get out of jail, and etc. Just maybe. I think it's just a plot hole. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, Anna doesn't. Anna doesn't wonder why. No, she doesn't wonder why. He's like no. Link, Elena's ex. Okay. Oh, of course. What are you gonna do? You gonna destroy Ooh. this company? Okay. Well, he heard Elizabeth, so I guess it makes sense. What? All I care about is little blip. Okay, well, um, what's uh, Little Blip's name? We'll find out in the epilogue. We're gonna find out in one second. Epilogue. We, Christian and Anastasia, live with our perfect babies. A toddler boy named Ted and a girl baby who is still gestating in the womb. In a beautiful house, uh, Christian is a perfect dad. And he BDSM sexed Anastasia up when she was a huge pregnant woman and it was erotic. Me, Charles... I didn't even read the epilogue when I wrote that because I remember it from memory, but now I'm reading it as I write this and say it. Taylor's 10-year-old daughter is there. I think that she and Taylor live in the attic or something like that. <laughs> Ted uh, was apparently a 15-hour laborer with an emergency C-section. Christian says something to the tune of, No natural birth for this baby, Anastasia. You nearly fucking died. Which, as far as I can tell, is not true. She didn't seem to be bleeding out. She, oh, she, she directly says to him, That's not true, Christian. Do you right. think it was so that her vagina would not be ruined? No. No, I don't think so. That's really mm -hmm. funny, though. I mean, I see why you would think that, because Christian's I'm, an awful person. I'm saying that E.L. James did that. Oh! So her vagina would not be ruined. That's weird! <laughs> but how? But isn't the long-term healing for that kind of thing okay? Yeah, it is, but... But maybe E.L. James is just awful. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Sheesh. Goddamn. <laughs> um, you nearly fucking died, which is not true. Anyway, by the way, they go through this kind of, like, C-section scene. Obviously, Anastasia doesn't see what happens, but what happens during a C-section is they take out all your other organs surrounding the uterus, so her liver and, like, her kidneys are just going to be, like, out on a metal plate, and that's what he's looking at. Because she's thinking, like, something's wrong. I can tell from his face. Well, what's wrong is that all your innards are out <laughs> on a fucking metal plate, and they're cutting you open. Like, that's all. Yeah, um, uh, actually, they probably should have put him out of the room for that. Yeah, they really should have, but he wouldn't leave because he's an idiotic Christian Grey. He just buys the hospital. I'm gonna buy your hospital and sell it if you don't let me see my <laughs> wife getting cut open. Here's a note uh, that is not in the summary. Um, they are debating what to name the future daughter, and uh, Anna is pushing for... Ella. Ella, Christian's uh, biological mother. mother's name, but Christian is adamantly against it. So but, they decide on Phoebe instead. I won't let her taint... Our family. So Even dumb. though I married you because you reminded me of her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, uh, also, Taylor and Mrs. Jones are married. She's yep. now Mrs. Taylor. Yeah, she's Mrs. Taylor now, by the way. And okay. they, uh, presumably but the daughter family. is Taylor's ex-wife's daughter. Right. Um, uh, so, and there's, a there's also two chapters uh, called Shades of Christian. Fifty's first Christmas. I didn't go over that. I feel like a dick. But basically... It's just um, baby Christian having his first Christmas with the um, Grays. I know. I Ataxia baby. baby Christian, that means he can't talk, is having Christmas with his wonderful new family, and it's really cute. And then there's, oh god, then there's a chapter called Meet Fifty Shades, which is the interview from the first uh, chapter of the first book from Claude's point of view, and holy shit, he is the no, worst. Not Claude's point of view, it's Christian's. Christian. Did I say Claude? Yeah, because yeah. Claude the Seal is the first <laughs> Sorry, person Christian. Sorry. Oh my god. From Christian's point of view, and he is the worst person ever. He's just like constantly thinking, She's so frumpy, I wanna fuck her! <laughs> yeah, he's the worst. Uh, Chad brought up something interesting yesterday, which is um, do we think that this is going to be retained as the first chapter to the book Grey? I believe it, at least someone told me it is. Wowie. Yeah. So she didn't change it. I don't think so. That's Sheesh. Funny. We were just talking about it because um she said it was um, she referred to it as an excerpt and I said it was written before so yeah it's I think it's just her, oh yeah was you know what? This is the same. This it was is exactly the same this was yeah it was um exactly the same as what um I read some excerpts oh, like, okay. there was like a Gawker thing or this yeah. thing um um she, she this is you know one of the things I think where 
where the the fans were like, more, we want more. And she's like, okay, I'll write a couple chapters from Kristen's point of view. And here's how it all started. And then she got to write, uh, you know, it all published. And now she's got to write the whole book. Mm. Uh, I will note in uh, one of the, about the author sections, in one of the versions of the book, it says she is now working on a new super, a new romance novel with a supernatural twist. But she didn't, she wrote, no, she didn't do that. She, wrote she the, might still be yeah, doing she it. She may though. still maybe. be doing it though. I don't know. She I could think, have been doing it at the same time. Maybe. I think maybe she's like, you know, this is where the money is though, so By the way, the one she, interesting Pretty much anything she writes is probably gonna make money though. Sorry, about the echo epilogue. Mm-hmm. There's a scene, a BDSM scene, where she's hugely pregnant. Yes. He whips her pregnant belly. Oh. He com- she comments that her daughter already okay. She comments that her daughter already must already love sex because she's kicking after he just had sex with her. <laughs> I didn't even read that. I just read over. Wait, okay. I'm gonna read this. Up. I'm gonna read this. Let's read. You need to read this right now. Okay. It's on five thirty. The strands of the flogger skim across my swollen belly at an achingly languorous pace. Have you had enough yet, Anna? Christian whispers in my ear. Oh, please! I beg, pulling other strings above my head as I stand blindfolded and tethered on the grid of the playroom the flogger's sweet sting bites into my behind please what i gasp please sir okay maybe he doesn't whip no he doesn't whip your belly but he's like drags yeah okay but he whips her butt christian places his hand over my ringing skin and rubs gently there 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 his words are soft his hand moves south and around his fingers slide inside me christian lies beside me his hand caressing my belly his long fingers splayed out wide. How is my daughter? She's dancing, I laugh. Dancing? Oh, yes. Wow, I can feel her. He grins. His blip, too. Somersaults inside me. I think she likes sex already. Christian frowns. Really? He says dryly. He moves his lips so they are against my bump. There'll be none of that until you're 30, young lady. I giggle. Oh, Christian, you're such a hypocrite. <laughs> okay, there's a lot there. Yeah. First, I, I I know that it's, you know, okay to have sex when you're pregnant, but man, it's weird. It's so strange to me the way in which I we think about up until... Okay, this is getting good. Some, some weird, okay, you know, let's, I read, point of conception, I read, conception creates life. Yes. Life starts at conception. I don't... I don't... I love abortion. Me but, too. Um, <laughs> Abortion's forever. Yeah, but... It's weird that, you know, up until the baby's born, it's totally fine to, like, jam your dick really near it. Yeah, and well, it's kind of, like, up here. I know, but still, like, you wouldn't put your dick that close to a baby <laughs> no, once really. it's out of the womb. <laughs> even if know. there's... <laughs> well, let's not go there. <laughs> This think, is this is just a personal point of yes. my whole, I hate baby I things. Have a, yeah, I see. I have but, a I mean, rebuttal for that. Okay. <laughs> I, I think make, that many I was gonna make a bad, a very bad joke. Okay, we'll do it. I was gonna make a you wouldn't fuck a car joke. <laughs> you wouldn't fuck a car. You wouldn't fuck you a wouldn't pizza, would you? A, you wouldn't fuck a pizza. You wouldn't download a fuck, would you? Well, well, many people probably would. would. Yeah, they, well, that's do. why we've got every the day. Oculus Rift. Billions but, and um, billions of people every day download fucks all over the world. Um. Uh, anyways, my rebuttal was. I'm so sorry. In some parts. Okay, let me start by saying this. Most pregnant women would probably disagree with what Charity was saying, because at certain parts of someone's pregnancy, they get very, um... Horny? Horny. And they need to get fucked. It's be- <laughs> That's awful! I can't believe I just said that. Um, but it's true. Uh, your sexual desire, if you're pregnant, can raise by quite a lot, and so I think this is okay. All right. Yeah, I think it's weird, and I don't like it. I mean, it's weird, but I think it's because... <laughs> I maybe... would never do it, but I would never get pregnant, so... Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Finally, I have one more thing to say. Yes. So, the baby is quoted as dancing. Who else inside Anna is dancing all the time? The inner goddess. The inner goddess. Oh no! The inner oh! Goddess is given form in the form of Bliff Number Two. No. Which is, why, which is why she never shows up. No, maybe she's just always in the baby. She's oh, the egg. Because she she's, doesn't even show wait, up in this book. It's oh only God. the subconscious. She says she she maybe shows up once or twice, but no, I don't no, think she never. does. I don't no, think the inner goddess it. is never mentioned in this book because she's a baby. Yeah, and yeah. guess the what? Entire the entire time, fucking baby's name Phoebe is a reference to light. The inner goddess is often described as being a being of light. What? 
You guys, so no, now we, know, now we know what the supernatural book that E.L. James is working on is. It was the inner goddess is going to be born and take over the world, <laughs> and like. I don't okay, know. Well, Maybe Taylor's fucking... daughter will have a lesbian relationship with the goddess. Inner goddess threat alert is at peak dangerousness. We need yeah. to evacuate. The goddess alert is like born. Goddess. Yeah. This is Silent Hill levels of like. Oh, it's exactly like Silent Hill. It's like Silent Hill um four three three oh, three three. It's exactly like Silent Hill three, which is the only one I finished. But like, <laughs> that's right. The goddess is reborn. Well, or, or just I mean, born. that's the main, the main, the goddess birth thing is a subplot in both games, but in three, it like actually happens. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. spoilers. spoilers. Okay, so I have a couple of final like wrap up questions. Okay. Uh, one one thing is just a comment. Uh, now with our perspective and the fact that it has already happened and Grey has been published, the book from Christian's perspective, wouldn't Fifty Shades of Grey been a better title for that book? Yes. <laughs> Since yep. it's for, from his perspective. Mm-hmm. Another question about the title. Uh, in this book. Fifty Shades Freed. What is the thing? Like how? How is he freed? The what is Travis freed? <laughs> <laughs> also, the inner goddess is mentioned ten times in the book. Oh, she's oh like, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's definitely much less. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, much less in the subconscious. But what is he being freed from? Because like, oh, his control freakery. But but he's not. not. Oh, but he and is. No. Oh, but he is. Why don't you just wait and I'll fucking slide it. <laughs> Ahem. I said I have. God damn it. I can't find the page, but when she's in the hospital, he says, you going and doing that thing that I couldn't control made me realize that um, control is a problem for me. And it also frees him kind of from his past abuse, too, because yeah. he's completely out of the hands of Mrs. Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, that's mainly what I was going to say. I think that's the main thing he's, like, freed from is being trapped under uh, Elena. But also, I think it's supposed to be a clever a clever pun on the fact that he's married now. Like he's not actually he's freed, <laughs> yeah, even though he's, he's, he's trapped in the marriage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's good. What do you guys think people enjoy about Anna and Christian's relationship, especially in this book? Because in the earlier ones, it's the will they, won't they, and then they do, and then there's BDSM and stuff, um, and there's always the the threat of like him leaving. I think it's the controlling. I think it's that's, a couple that's things. when I when I when I asked the ladies at the at the movie theater before I got told that I could not talk to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> they said that. Their favorite part was when he was like, "Get the fuck in the car, Anastasia." Whoa! Like, they like they like him taking control, right? Um, you know, asserting himself over her, knowing what's best for her. I feel like it's if that's what women want, is that okay? Yes, but it's not good. I was thinking about this very hard, and I was talking to this talking about this with my mom of all people um she actually had some interesting thoughts she was like she's like the problem with this kind of book is they're gonna read this book and they're gonna think well this is a woman's account all women like this Mm -hmm. and she said that's the problem with men that's the problem with society is that they assume they read one sort of manifestation of this thing and they assume that's the norm and there's many manifestations of this type of a relationship really so it's not one but she said the thing that really needs to be impressed upon people is that you need to ask your partner what they like, not rely on external media to tell people what women like. Where is I going with this shit? I think what draws people to this relationship, in the third book especially, it's hot and cold. There are so many fucking pages of arguments. Yep. You can't imagine. I cut out so much of it for you. You should thank me, <laughs> listeners. Um, hot and cold. Taboo, because there is a little bit of fetish play in here. Like, a little bit. I'd say it's not as heavy as the other books, but it's present. Oh, fuck! What? What? I forgot something. Oh, is it a sex scene? He drinks her breast, breast milk. What? Where is that? He is Okay, it's alluded to, but he says, I love you, pregnant. I'm looking... I was getting used to the taste of breast milk. <gasps> No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. I no that fucking way. I was just—I just remember me talking about fetish play. That reminded me that like suddenly there's fucking okay. lactation play, all right, and pregnancy weird pregnancy fetish stuff, all um, right. And I wonder if that was just to like show that I they, think it was just a check mark off the list of fetish things that she could cover. That's a pretty far jump, I would say. Yeah, I think. See, like that's where it gets like really weird for me. I think most people who I think most women who have been pregnant or get pregnant would say like, okay, I'd fuck while pregnant, but. Would they be like, okay, I really like the idea of my husband drinking my breast milk. Like, that's a little bit much. I mean, it's it's fine. 
in a way it's okay, but in another way it happens to be, I think breastfeeding is one of those things in our society that has a huge taboo even when babies are doing, which is what they're meant to do. I, yeah, it's so it is fetish play. It's, it's fetish play for sure. It's allowed to be, you're allowed to do it, you can do it, but yeah. it's not conventional. Let's put no. it that way. It's, it's, it's a far cry from anything else that's happened in this book, Jesus, I think. I can't, you reminded me of that. I didn't notice that in my last read-through. Oh, boy. And I wonder if it's to show that their relationship only gets kinkier as it goes on, maybe? I think that was the case. Yeah. Maybe, or maybe they just, you know, well, I think Christian, the whole... like... It's, we're Maybe just it's part of his it. mommy issues. Oh yeah. my god! It it is. And I mean, even if it's not supposed to be, it is. <laughs> like this, that's that's an interesting thing. <sighs> but I think it's also supposed to display that, like you know, Christian's kinks aren't going to go away, and and has learned. To but wait that. a second! I have to play devil's advocate for the first time, maybe in this podcast episode. What if this was written because Yell James is into it, just for the sake of? <laughs> And what if the implication then is that as a woman you will enjoy this fetish? It's not always it's not always about a man's enjoyment of a woman's body. It might also be women's enjoyment yeah, of what a man's doing to her. That's I've 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 heard a story recently about just that sort of thing. I've also heard a story from somebody about just that very sort of thing. Yeah, I think actually statistically speaking, it's probably more that men are into it than women are, but I think women yeah. are into it too. Anyway, what were we so, talking about? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like I agree with uh, what both of you were saying about like what people are getting out of out of the book and the thing that you were saying about and your like mom was echoing about you know one narrative being the narrative that stands in for everyone's like yeah. experiences or like what they want that already happened with Fifty Shades and that was already that was what happened when it became popular. You know, like women want this, but like they were saying it like all women want this, yeah. Not just like it's representative of a thing that women could want or like a thing that yeah. could be desirable. And that was one of the problems with a lot of the dialogue around it was that it was very, very generalizing. And the other thing about the relationships, I think, is true too. Um, it's perfectly fine for someone to want someone to control them in a relationship or to have that dynamic in their sex life or anything like that. Right, but it should never but, be foisted upon them. But why is it satisfying for so many people that this sort of relationship is the way that it is in the book? And I think it's because it plays into a lot of the pre-existing ideas and attitudes unquestionably. Like, it re it's reinforcing them Hetero in a way... relationships. Yeah, it's reinforcing them in a really satisfying way, where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm the girl who's going, you know, like... I've changed him, but also he's still got his problems, yeah. so he's interesting and brooding and dark, yeah. but I can fix him, and mm, like all exactly. of that is there, and it's very satisfying for people to read that, which is you know why fan fiction is really popular. And it's fine for that to be a fantasy, but to accept that as like a reality is not healthy. Um, I think this is the important thing about representation in literature, in any media. Haha, -ha, let's turn it into a fucking awful episode that's going to make everyone mad at me. I'm ready for your hate. <laughs> Video games, books, art, etc., Representation is important. This is why. The fact that E.L. James's account of, sorry, not account, but the fact that E.L. James's novel is accepted as the norm and that there are no opposing examples to this that are as popular and as insidiously present in our society, that's why we need this. So whether it's a white woman, a woman, a black woman, people who are of minority backgrounds, genres that are just a little bit different, Genres that don't have representation of people other than white guys. This is why you need different accounts, because otherwise we have this awful thing. And it has physically impacted our real world that we live in. There were crimes. There were fucked up things happening. This what? reinforces things that already happened. There was a rapist who, who oh, got yeah. no keys. Remember this? Yeah. So Vaguely. Sort of vaguely. Anyway, the gist of it was he was... Book. He was a college kid, he raped this woman anally, and then he blamed this book. Yeah. yeah. He blamed the book, right. he scapegoated it. And the thing also to keep in mind about this is that it is derived from Twilight, which also is extremely problematic. Right. So it's basically adding to this already existing, like, It's very kind strong... of adding more, instead of adding representation, it's just adding the same yeah. thing. Yes. It's just and worse. feeding back. Yeah. You can't rely on one example of a book to give you the ultimate impression of the world. And that's... Please don't just read one type of book. That is a large part, part of the reasons record. why we did this podcast. Um, so I think we'll probably have some sort of a, another debrief episode for the yeah, series well, or something. Because we would also like to have your questions and comments about this. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. But um, one of the reasons we wanted to, to talk about the book, aside from the fact that it is really badly written and like all that stuff, is because... Everyone loves it. Yeah, everyone loves it. And, you know, Cherry Doom has a background as a dominatrix uh, trained and like with a lot of experience. 
And right. there has been a lot of talk on like different blogs and stuff about the problems with the BDSM, but there hasn't necessarily been so much examination of like how, and I hate to bring like sort of like academic theory into this, like how much this, you know, sort of intersectionally is fucked up. Like there's so much in this book that ties into other problems. It exists as such a perfect monument to everything yeah. that's fucked up in our society and people <laughs> love it. They're eating it up. We're finally at a point where we can like talk about this now and it's not just like, blown off necessarily as being you know like it still is like being like crazy crazy feminist mm -hmm, like examination yeah. or like you know well whatever or like men don't care about that sort of thing now that it's you know there's a space to talk about it it's it's worth talking about mm -hmm. and i think that's why we did it so. do you think that anyone else has examined this book as much as we have the one person who runs the tumblr blog identity around yeah. him yes has. yes, she yes. Has, yeah yes. that person has done a lot of a lot of work. So I would say they understand it as well as we do, if not better. I, I, de think are... I detonate around him .com. Yep. Yeah. Is there, are there dashes? Shout out. Shout out. I, I don't, don't think remember. So. I, think I don't think so. Word. It is one word. Yeah. Um, I think also there's been a lot of, you know, probably like academic work, especially in, in feminist uh, circles, but it's, again, like it's got the sort of ivory tower problem. It's yeah. not like a public issue. Yeah. Or if they do write about it, it's ignored. And there's a lot of Fifty Shades, like, fans that will Blind just hate hatred. on it just be like oh you just don't understand or yeah. like, just like with twilight like you don't like romantic stories or mm -hmm. bullshit like that like yeah. writing it off because it's critical yeah yeah <sighs> all right and i guess with that we're we're done wait there's one now. last thing i want to ask oh okay christian's resistance fantasy oh, i forgot to talk yeah, about that yeah. i forget where that happens but um me too i couldn't find it um can, can I get the gist of it? Just because I don't okay. know what you're talking Christian, about. Okay, uh, Christian says, I think I'd like you to fight back a little bit for this scene. And they do. Uh, she does. Um, and it's sort of... Yeah, he's like trying to restrain her and he wants her to fight back. Right. Mm -hmm. and Because she, she's like, uh, she's like, you know, she lets him restrain her. He's like, I think I'd like you to fight back this time. Hmm, I'd like some resistance, he murmurs. His nose screwing my jaw resistance. I still, he stops. You want me to fight you? Here? Okay, I'm in my shock. He nods. Uh, now, uh, he's tense, lying on top of me, and his growing erection is digging tantalizingly into my soft, willing flesh, distracting me. What's this about? Brawling? A fantasy? Will he hurt me? My inner goddess shakes her head. Never. She's got her karate suit on, and she's limbering up. Is this what you meant about coming to bed angry? He nods once more, his eyes still. Hmm, my fifty wants to rumble. Don't bite your lip, he warns. Compliantly, I release my lip. I think you have me at a disadvantage, Mr. Gray. Surely you've already got me where you want me? Good point. Uh, so you want to play rough? I grab his hands, pinning them. They do a little, like, fighting and stuff. I don't know. Was that... Did you guys mention that because it's, like, problematic somehow? I was going to talk about it just as a, as a BDSM thing, but yeah, I think Chad was more concerned about it. Um, just, uh, like, me personally, that sort of stuff makes me uncomfortable because I don't... Even if it's, like, something that... Well, in this case, this is something Christian wants. But if it was something, like, you know, Anna wanted, um, that's a little bit different, but it still makes me uncomfortable just, like, personally if someone requests that. Really? Um, yeah. Because uh, I don't... Yeah, it's... If it's purely, you know, like, it's their own fantasy, but there's just... At, I don't know. It just it, it bothers me in ways, and I don't know if I can necessarily uh, vocalize it. I don't think it's bad or wrong for someone to want to do that. It but. doesn't seem to me like it's specifically a rape fantasy no, no it but it's, that way to it's sort of leaning towards that yeah i don't think she would ever say that no no but it's leaning towards that but there are degrees for instance yeah. um i used to do this sort of thing even before i knew i was into bdsm i would like wrestle with my boyfriends yeah i was about to say i didn't want to like be weird i was going to say i feel like that's a pretty common facet of a lot of relationships that are hetero like you sort of roughhouse a little bit sometimes mm -hmm. i don't know if it ever not maybe not to this degree of like where it's like sexual and like he gets hard but like just as far as like oh give me that sandwich ha, -ha. yeah exactly like, mm -hmm. like that kind of thing like that's well, well but, like, not more more than what you just no did. more but i mean it can be more sexual too i'm just i'm trying to be g-rated i'm not sure why because well we're no but like in the, yeah like in the situation it's like 
He's well, used it's true. To... Even during sex, like like a guy throwing you down on the bed and kissing you, everybody loves that shit. Well, but, but apparently, what, what Christian <laughs> wants, what Christian wants here is he's used to having Anna being compliant and like right getting like getting everything he wants. Here he wants an instance of Anna resisting what he wants. But that's the thing; he has always liked her resisting him, but not usually so physically, though. Yeah. No, he's intrigued by the fact that she resists him, and it does attract him. But the to say like to put it this way, like in. It, it's it sort of casts the dynamic in a very different light for me. I'd have to look at the passage in question, like, but I don't want to right now. Um, she wants him to put on the pretenses of you know not wanting his advances, hmm. or at least not wanting what's happening. Oh, I see. Like that's weird. I guess like I could see it if it was like, isn't it fun to roughhouse? Let's fuck. I and think I mean, that's they talk about the it beforehand. So that's, yeah. but it's just there's just like that sort of thing. I I just never know really how to feel about it. Yeah, personally. I don't know. It feels like I hate to say this, Chad, but I think that it might be a common thing for women to like it. Either when the woman is in the one winning or the woman's the one losing. Either way, I think it's a common thing. Feature. Um, yeah. Don't quote me on that, though. Well, I've heard that, like you know, that sort of thing for like if a woman is requesting it, uh, like to be the one that is being forced or the the play of force. For some people, it's like a loss of control that is like you know, sexual. It, it doesn't. It isn't always that. So I mean, but this is not the case in this book. I don't know. See, like, I hate to. I don't know if this makes sense, but like, I think we'd all agree that there's a difference between fucking and making love. We've talked about that before, I'm sure. I would say fucking. This is more like fucking. Like, it's a. It's very physical. Not necessarily domination doesn't always have to come into this, but the fact that like a guy can do this is, you know, fun for most people. It's, but I wouldn't say that's universal. Just saying. I want to impress. There's a line. There's a line between what he's doing here and what maybe most normal vanilla people would do with it. Like, but I, I think criticizing it would be really complicated. That's how I feel. Well, I'm not trying to criticize it. No, um, no, but I, I just mean like give it a critical yeah, eye. That's it's needed. sort of it's an area of um, you know, like this sort of stuff that we because it doesn't come up that we haven't talked yeah. about. It, well, like, you know, where you have, like, some of, like, the home invasion fantasies and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, like, um, that to me is, like, a way more clear example of, like... Yeah. So... Um, but, yeah, that's... I don't know. Some people like that. All I really have is... Yeah. But and... it, is, it is definitely considered fetish territory. Yeah, there's, uh, there's like, a, a wrestling thing. Fetish community. Yes. Um... I've done it a few Oh, gotcha, Muchi. No, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. I've I've done something like that a few times, both before and during BDSM um, mm-hmm. Awakening or whatever. It's fun to, like, be able to fight someone. Yes. You know, and not face any consequences for it. But it could be kind of scary if you don't totally trust the other person. Yes, if you guys... And if you, like, the feel... the Like, the fear that you could lose and something yes. bad could happen yes. to you, even if you're dumb... <laughs> Kind of scary. You yeah. might have to kick someone in the balls to get no, think, them to stop. And I think that's something we should, like, before we finish, like, that's one thing that also I think probably doesn't get talked about enough with regards to this book. You're made to feel that Anna trusts Christian, but Anna constantly says that she doesn't trust him. And, like, that's part of the reason that some of the scenes are scary. She yeah. trusts him to fuck her, but she shouldn't. <laughs> like, well, the whole thing about, like, her... The, the scene with, that I would say yeah. is the safe word scene yeah. for my safe word. Remember when we used to She doesn't trust him there. Like that, yeah. yeah. Like, she doesn't trust him there, and as she shouldn't, and because he wasn't going to stop. They're supposed to be married. I mean, they've not known each other for very long, but... Well, she mm-hmm. rushed into this marriage. <laughs> um, I know, do you like? Um, but... Does that wrap it up for us? I think so, as far as Fifty Shades Free is concerned. Whew. Okay, that was Fifty Shades Free. <sighs> Enjoy this long-ass that podcast. That was the trilogy for now. Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, laters, baby. Laters, laters baby. Laters, baby.